Great to have you with us. An elimination game for Morgantown, the number 15 national seed, West Virginia, taking on Texas A&M. And stepping in is Tyler Dones. Christian Rowe is ready. First pitch on the way, and it's a strike, and off we go for Morgantown. Think of the matchup. Look at our two leadoff batters, Stones for West Virginia and Shoemake for A&M. These are the guys that need to be on the base and set the table. Quickly, no balls, two strikes. And Tyler Dones, two hits in the first game, including a two-run double. That was against Fordham. And then last night against Duke was one for four. We have had capacity plus crowds the first two days. Over 4,000 each day for a ballpark that seats 2,500 with standing room is 3,500, so we far exceeded that. And the strikeout of Dones begins the game, but it's a Sunday and it's coming off a really tough loss for West Virginia, so we'll see how many of the Mountaineer fans come back on what's been a pretty quick turnaround from last night to today. Yeah, a quick turnaround and a turnaround to where last night's ball game against Duke, this West Virginia Mountaineer Club punched out 13 times. That's something they have to eliminate. They've got to get the ball in play and put pressure on this A&M defense. Well, Darius Hill, one of the few offensive bright spots last night against Duke as he went three for three, so he had half of their team's six hits. Outside edge strike from Roa. That's fairly generous of you, Niels. Uh, <laughs> outside edge, uh, well, let me inside of the coaches or the batter's box. Looks like uh, Sal Giacomantonio, our home plate umpire, can be a little liberal. I like it. Get him swinging. Being a catcher all those years in the big leagues, you liked a little bigger strike zone for your pitchers anyway. Looks like it may be playable down the left field side. A long run for Camp Blake near in the stands, but has enough room to make the catch. As Hill fouls out to Blake. Two outs. Rob Childress in his 14th season as the head coach for Texas A&M. Like Randy Mazie, the head coach for West Virginia, he handles pitching. And the pitching has, as we have alluded to, been the strong point of this team this year. There is an extremely large hole on the left side with the shift for Marcus Inman. How about that? Yeah, you got you got Bruden, Braden Shoemake, the shortstop. I mean, it's almost like a deep shortstop hole between uh, what we call the five-six hole between short and third. Ty Coleman almost on the line, and Shoemake playing a, a short left center field. It almost looks like a softball position. Ripping a miss by Inman. Count advances to two and one. Uh, 2 0 2 -oh heater there. Inman with a real good swing. I think it was by him, but that's the kind of swing you want to have at a 2 0 -oh pitch. Looks like he got a good one as hit and just couldn't catch up. If you're a West Virginia fan, you wanted to see Inman run into one. He's hit nine out of the park this year. He hit one foul about 425 feet out of the park last night, but that didn't count. Makes a decent hack. It goes to three and two. Yeah, on our way here to the ballpark, walking from the hotel, we kind of crossed the street, and, and Niels and I were talking about, gee whiz, how far was that home run that Coleman hit yesterday? And we, we figured it's got to be somewhere around 450. That's whacked into the alley in left center field by Inman. Is he going to think two? He might think about it, but he stops. As the center fielder, Deloach, cuts it off and fires it in. It's a base hit for Inman, his first of the regional. After going over for his first seven. Well, initially, I'd like to think that he would think in two out of the blocks, but high breaking ball just hammers us in the left center field and probably you know, fortunate that that one didn't get out on the street with the power of Inman. Mm, clean up patter. Paul McIntosh is the DH. Roll out of the 
Stretch pours in a strike with a fastball. Miami native out of Dade Christian High School. He began his collegiate playing days at Motlow State Community College. It's been his freshman year there. Transferred into West Virginia for this season. Made all Big 12 second team. Like the batter before him, Inman, McIntosh has nine home runs. Pitch pitcher, as you mentioned at the top, fastball curve, slider change. And that ball had some pretty good bend to it. Yeah, that ball uh, really almost went straight down, not a true curveball. Hey, that was a slider, nice tight slider. Doesn't break a lot left to right, a little bit more from up to down. Back to the fastball that's fouled off. For those folks that are out there the difference between the curveball and slider the curveball thrown not nearly as hard if we're looking at the clock more 12 to 6 the slider a little bit more to 3 to 9 depending if you're a righty or a lefty and there's the variation of somewhere in between where they call it the slurve McIntosh on the ground is short shoemaker gobbles it up and makes the underhand toss to Bryce Blom to retire the side so West Virginia picks up a two-out hit by Inman. He is stranded. And AM coming up when we come back to Morgantown. Come the Aggies in the bottom of the first in the lineup for Coach Childress's team as Shoemake at the top of the order. Mikey Honer, the catcher, hitting cleanup. Same batting order they had in yesterday's win against Fordham. And they face a freshman, a true freshman on the mound, Ryan Bergert out of Canton, Ohio. Well, interesting selection to throw today's game, this being the second start of his young career his first start was against Texas Tech five innings pitch one hit no runs no walks four K's so outstanding how he does it now he's got a low 90 fastball his curveball and change up just in the mix that start against Texas Tech came in the Big 12 tournament semifinal game it was a two nothing win from West Virginia and the fans for West Virginia really thought that's the win that cemented them getting the regional to host here. Shoemake, a couple of hits his last two at bats yesterday. In the hole, 0 2. In the grand scheme of things, you know, Braden Shoemake, yeah, three for nine in the tournament, a couple stolen bases, hasn't scored yet. Yet the Aggies are still here. And so they're. Big dog, let's say, uh, that a number one hitter really hasn't shown yet, but 
definitely has that ability and pedigree to all of a sudden show up and carry this team. His numbers offensively leading most categories, leads them in average RBIs, doubles, triples. Sends one to pretty deep left center field. Austin Davis, who's getting the start out there, makes the catch on the track, falls down, and does hang on. And Shoemake allowed first out. Well, Brandon White almost made a play like this last night. And now his replacement, Austin Davis, in the left center, leaves his feet right on the track. A little crash in the wall, not nearly the impact as Brandon White last night, but out and out, what a spectacular play. Well, your point a valid one, though, because I'm sure Mountaineer fans were hoping it wasn't deja vu all over again. First inning last night when White went banging into the center field fence and went face first, stayed in the game after being on the turf for about 10 minutes, but not in the lineup today due to soreness. There's Brandon White in the West Virginia dugout. Looked like he had a lot of shoulder discomfort last night. He was watching him in the outfield after that collision. He was trying to move that throwing arm. He eventually threw somebody out at the plate. But that's one of those things your body the next day really feels all that soreness. He was getting massaged in between innings, and I'm sure if he was physically possible, he would be out there. Bryce Blom at the plate. He homered in yesterday's game. One of those four home runs hit by Texas A&M, and he works a five-pitch walk. With one out. Let's check in for the first time today with Chris Cotter. Left fielder, number three, Cam Blake. Do not send that bad weather our way, Chris, if you can help it. There certainly is some rain in the forecast for this afternoon. We'll try to dodge that here in Morgantown. Cam Blake, the left fielder, steps in. All one inside. The Burgert's numbers are absolutely outstanding. It's a small sample size, so you, you really can't have a, a you know a true track record. But so far, outstanding with strikeout to walk ratio. All his numbers. There goes Blom. Throw down a second. A head first slide safe with the left hand in. And Blom steals his team leading 15th base in 17 tries. That was a good throw by Gonzalez, but a good jump by Blom. Ivan Gonzalez would have had to put this one right on the money. This ball. Just maybe a touch high. Good slap tag by Tucker. But that's all about the jump and the time it takes for Berger to get the ball to Gonzalez. 43rd team steal in 59 attempts for AM this year. Three and oh. One home run this year for Cam Blake. He came against South Carolina back in April, which was his first career collegiate home run. Strike on the inside corner. Yeah, we were mentioning that. And he had the bases loaded, and he gave one a ride just foul for the Grand Salami. That would have been a nice number two homer. Yeah, that was yesterday against Fordham. Did have a hit and an RBI in yesterday's win over the Rams, which eliminated Fordham University. Well, Fordham was the first team eliminated. And the next will come from the loser of this game. And these are the top two seeds here. The host, West Virginia, the one. A&M, the two. 
Many thought we'd see this game as the first game yesterday in the winner's bracket. Not the way it worked out. Three two pitch coming from Ryan Bergert. And this is high with his fastball and AM has two on with one out. Well, in Bergert's five innings against Texas Tech in the Big 12 tournament, he allowed only one hit and didn't walk anybody. Struck out four. He did hit a batter, but he's walked back-to-back -back hitters here in the first inning. Now, this is maybe a freshman jitters of uh, this game. Yeah, I don't know if you can consider it bigger than the Texas Tech game, but maybe a little more pressure actually yeah. pitching at home. And, and your season on the line, no question. For a true freshman out of Canton, Ohio. Runners go, throws going to third, and the third baseman Brophy had to come off the bag to keep it from getting away. So a double steal, Blom and Blake. Second steal of the inning for Blom. Well, AM taking a page out of the Mountaineer playbook. Mountaineers run quite often. AM not necessarily known for it, but there's something that they've seen that they like. Oh, oh, the Mikey Honer, two balls, no strikes. In the West Virginia defense, willing to give up a run for an out. They're playing deep. They feel that they're going to be able to score early in a ball game. Probably a prudent move. Try to stay out of that big inning. Was looking fastball, I think, but that was elevated enough that he takes it out of the zone, and it's three and zero. Oh. Three homers for Honer. One against Kentucky. The other, one of the others, also in conference play against LSU. Taking all the way on three and zero. Oh. Well, Coach Childress knows his players better than any, but. If I got my number four bopper up there, it's a three and zero oh count. Giving him the I'm, green light. I'm giving him the green light. Uh, you know, first inning, two guys in scoring position. You know, you might get a quick three on the board. Well, if he sees that same fastball here, he'll be hacking. Didn't get a fastball. Got a breaking ball away. Well, that's kind of helps prove my point right there. You know, three and one count. Get a freshman on the mound's been a little shaky. And now he just dials it back a little bit, throws that good slide piece on the outside corner. So from 3 and 0 to 3 and 2 on Mikey Honer. Back to the fastball that was elevated and he chases. And a big strikeout for the freshman Ryan Berger in West Virginia. And at 91 miles an hour, elevated above the belt, tied up Horner. No chance. That's a huge, huge effort by Berger going from 3-0, coming back, and punching the guy out with two guys scoring position and less than one out. Designated hitter steps in for the Aggies. Will Frizzell. one inside. And we've seen all tournament long and really all tournaments in general at all levels, two out RBIs are such momentum makers or breakers. Berger can get out of this. That may just spurn his offense on to do something special in their half of the inning. Falls behind again. Two balls, no strikes. Brazell did not play in the first game, the loss to Duke. He did start as the DH yesterday. He was 0 for 4 with a walk. It's that strike call in the inside corner. So far to the left-handed batters, we've really seen Berger try to bust them inside. Well, Berger, interesting. Uh, looks like he's got a little better command of his slider than he does his fastball. 2-0, and oh, just, just zipped it right in. Gets him to chase a low fastball that was out of the zone. It's 2-2. Two and two. 
Here come the Mountaineer fans, some on their feet. fights back after a couple of walks. It was second and third, one out, and AM fails to score. After one, no score for Morgantown. The shot to clears at that national championship a few years back, trying to eliminate one of those top seeds. There are seven national seeds in jeopardy today, including Georgia Tech. Here we go. West Virginia is one of those national seeds in an elimination game today. They come to bat here top of the second. And catcher Ivan Gonzalez. We've been watching this West Virginia team for a few days now, Spanky, and Ivan Gonzalez sticks out for me. He's had good at-bats, plays well behind the plate. He's been impressive. Well, both sides uh, of the ball. I really like his approach hitting. Out towards deep short. Long throw, Shoemake, and the catcher, Gonzalez, beats it out. Well, he hit it to the right spot as Shoemake had to go deep in the hole. And Gonzalez runs pretty well for a guy that has to squat behind the plate as much as he does. And yeah, he'll hit. The, yeah, this is a, uh, what I call a, used to be AstroTurf hit. Well, we'll call it synthetic turf base hit. That ball had a lot of top spin. Shoemake couldn't come in on it, was way too deep in order to throw out Gonzalez. And, you know, I love it whenever catchers can run well. That was, uh, let's just say, uh, Achilles heel, or actually I had two Achilles heels. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, 12 years in the big leagues, how many infield hits did you have? Can you count um, on one hand, or you had more than that? Yeah, well, um, it's, it's, it's less than yeah. less than five. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> and one of them, Dennis Eckersley, was on the mounds before he became a closer with the Oakland Athletics. He was a starter for the Cubs, and... It was a squeeze bunt that I bunted and he fell down. It was slippery and fell down. I got the first base, got the RBI, base hit. Told everybody it was a line rocket to right field the next day. <laughs> it was a hit. <laughs> One two though on Brophy here. It's now Christian Roa trying to bounce back after that leadoff hit. Brophy in the regional one for eight combined.
Nice ball elevated is out of the zone. And Brophy's really kind of struggled. It doesn't look like he's seeing the ball real well. And when that happens, many times you'll pull that shoulder trying to get your hands to the ball. And what that does is pulls your eyes off of it. They've been attacking him away, and he's really struggled getting that. Takes that to deep left. Blake retreating, looks up. Spanky figured out what to do with that pitch away. He took it the other way and out of the park. Uh, honest, folks, um, he does not have uh, an earpiece in his helmet, uh, but that's exactly how they've been getting him out. And what a great adjustment by Brophy. You see here that shoulder stays in, the head's in. Not a horrible pitch as far as location. And that's just Kevin Brophy with good oppo power. It was ninth home run of the year, which ties him with Inman and McIntosh for the West Virginia team lead. A bit of a sigh of relief from the West Virginia fans after getting shut out last night by Duke. There's a hard hit ball off the bat. A leg, a little fumble, but staying with it. Hunter Coleman feeds Roa with a 3-1 put out. And it's West Virginia that is on the board first in Morgantown today. Now that in itself, after nine goose eggs last night to come up and put a crooked number on you know that's huge and having it happen you know your number five and six you know guys contributing you obviously think your one two is going to set the table three fours do the damage five and six are accompanying players just guys that yes they are part of the offense but you know, whenever you start getting production from that lower half of the lineup, that's some great feelings for your ball club. Brophy was a combined one for eight in the regional prior to that two run home run. He had a single in the first game of the regional against Fordham. Freshman shortstop Tevin Tucker. And some nice movement sinking fastball at 89 from Christian Roa. Home run allowed by Roa his fourth of the year in nearly 46 innings pitch this season. Just off the plate a bit. A full count. Possibly a little low. Mikey Honer, the catcher, trying to do his best. Slight of hand. That's to right. Logan Foster backs up to make the catch. A pretty good swing the other way for Tucker, but he is out number two. It's going to bring up the center fielder Austin Davis, who's making his first start in this regional, made a really nice catch to begin the first inning with Brandon Shoemake in the bottom half. This is his first plate appearance of the regional. The 19-year-old freshman from Orlando. And we talk about it all the time, the what ifs. And you know that shot that he caught in the first inning, you know, you get a replacement out there. What if Shoemake, you know, doubles or triples? You know, the complexion of this ball game changes completely. Well, the next two batters walked. Erner was able to get out of it with the strikeouts of Honer and Frizzell. Take it on 2-0. Austin Davis was a very good football player as well in high school at Conrad Academy. There in the Orlando area. He was an all-metro defensive player of the year in football. Three and one. I'm a Florida resident and get a chance to see. They've got some outstanding youth sports. 
developing some tremendous athletes. Baseball-wise, they get to play 12 months out of the year. So baseball kids advance early at a young age. Coleman with room near the dugout. But West Virginia on the board first, thanks to Kevin Brophy. Now Brophy making an adjustment. Gets a pitch down, away. It's going, going in the bullpen. Two nothing, Mountaineers. Here in Morgantown, Texas A&M trying to come out of the loser's bracket after an 8-5 loss to Duke to start things. West Virginia beat Fordham but lost to Duke last night. A&M eliminated Fordham, and this is the elimination game with the winner facing Duke in the regional final, needing to beat them twice to win the regional. You know, what a momentum shift. A&M second and third, one out, previous half inning. West Virginia gets out of it. They come up to the plate. They push across two runs. You know, and, and I tell you, momentum is huge, confidence. But I think nuts uh, more at the college level than anywhere else. You know, these guys, a lot of them, they wear their hearts on their sleeve. You know, they're very, very emotional about, you know, their teammates and passionate about playing the game. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, you see the swings and momentum and it's just unbelievable how that works. Logan Foster leading off for the Aggies. They have the six, seven, and eight hitters coming up here. The Kevin Brophy two-run home run in the top of the frame for West Virginia has them in front. It's going to twist back on the first base side and land in amongst the spectators. Still a nice crowd here on this Sunday in Morgantown. Not the crowds we've seen the first two Mountaineer games but it is a Sunday afternoon and a quick turnaround as they played the, the night game last night. Also out of play to the right. Logan Foster who's out of Lincoln, Nebraska. In fact, uh, Rob Childress, the head coach of Texas A&M, was an assistant in Nebraska from 1998 to 2005, and Logan Foster was in daycare with one of Childress's daughters in Lincoln. So his connection to the Childress family goes back all the way to Nebraska. Fastball inside on the 3-2 pitch. And Foster walks to begin the inning. That's the third walk already handed out by Berger. For more coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com.
It's a big Sunday in the NCAA baseball regionals. We've already seen one national seed go down yesterday as Oregon State, the defending champ, fell on their home turf in Corvallis. And seven other national seeds today in jeopardy, including the 15th national seed, West Virginia, here. Hunter Coleman had some day yesterday, didn't he? Had a couple of home runs. One was hit that you and I were still trying to measure this morning, how far it went out to left field. And we guessed about 425 to 450? Yeah, easy. And uh, well out of the ballpark landing. Well, either in the street, it was dark whenever he hit it, but possibly clearing the street outside of our stadium. And I score on my... Uh, electronically on my iPad and uh, the home one of the home runs is off um, off your screen it, it's off the screen <laughs> well after the walk to Foster and ball one to Hunter Coleman the head coach slash pitching coach Randy Maisie of Mountaineers out there to the mound Hunter Coleman his first multi home run game and his younger brother Ty also hit one as the Aggies hit four out of the park yesterday. First time they've done that in a regional since they did it against Florida International in the regionals in 2010 when they actually hit five in that game. So it's bumped the home run total on the year for Hunter Coleman to five. You know, after a visit to the mound, I've heard a lot of hitters say sometimes they sit fastball. Well, you know, it is different rules of thought there, but I thought the timing Randy Maisie uh, used right there was was really on uh, on on point. He just walked somebody, went one and zero, rather than waiting to two and zero, where it's really a hitter's count. You know, get a chance to go out there, calm down the young man, and uh, we'll see what happens. Whether I consider it a good visit or yeah. a bad visit, still to be determined. Out of play right side. Uh, Coleman, Hunter Coleman, two home runs yesterday. The one that we thought went 425 to 450 is this one that we, we circle for you, but out into the street. Fortunately, missed the SUV. Trust us, it went a very long way. Blocked by Gonzalez. He holds the runner, Foster, at first. You know, once again, Ivan Pudge Gonzalez making his presence known. A lot of catchers get all kinds of praise whenever you block the ball at third base, but there's more games saved by keeping that guy at first. Next pitch, maybe a ground ball and double play. Gets out of play again to the right. That's one of the things as a catcher, you know, you don't need the pad on the back. You just like the result. It's very similar to a offensive lineman making a big block and the running back just going into the end zone untouched. Gonzalez, a senior from the Austin area around Rock, Texas. Hunter Coleman turns away from ball three, so it's a full count. So the pitcher, Berger, has worked it to a full count on four of the seven hitters he's faced so far. And up to 40 total pitches as a result of those deep counts. Foster is running. The pitch is fouled away. In a perfect world, for Randy Maisie and the Mountaineers, they'd love to have Berger get five innings. You know, that's going to be a little tough with the pitch count right now. You figure it should be somewhere in the neighborhood of 100. We've seen pitchers up to about 125 this tournament. So but I think about 100 pitches, and they'd be happy. Out to center field, Austin Davis maneuvers to his left. First down to the inning. Now Berger avoids issuing his fourth walk and gets the key first out. 
face the eighth spot in the order. The center fielder, Zach Deloach. Check on the runner. Foster was attempted three steals this year, all of them successfully. Deloach inside again continues to work into the left handed batters. Some pitchers are comfortable pitching to one side of the plate, a little uncomfortable. Here he's pitching to his glove side versus arm side. Fouled away by Zach Deloach. And generally speaking, Whenever a right hander throws to his arm side, that's a way to left handers. Usually has a little bit of run to it. Whenever he's thrown to his glove side, the ball maybe has a little bit of cut into the left hander. See what he brings 1 1, and instead another throw over to check on Foster. West Virginia leading 2 0 thanks to a two run home run from Kevin Brophy in the top of the second inning. It's an elimination game from Morgantown between the SEC and Big 12. Well, AM runners getting some respect. They've already got three stolen bases so far in this ballgame, so they're doing their best to make Ivan Gonzalez's job a little bit easier. You know, in Deloach's hands and a pop up to the left side and the third baseman Kevin Brophy to the studio and Chris Cotter. Appreciate that, Chris. What's going on in Athens, Florida State? Mike Martin. Last time around for him. Trying to win that elusive title. I met Coach Martin doing a game. Little mini tournament, Miami. University of South Florida, Florida State and Florida. Mike one to Ty Coleman. Legendary Seminole head coach Mike Martin. Retired after this season, over 2,000 wins. Nobody's won more. 16 times to Omaha, but looking for championship number one. Two balls and a strike. Ty yeah. Coleman, a home run yesterday. Yeah, getting back to Coach Martin. You know, we rely heavily on scouting reports from coaches and he couldn't have been more gracious trying to help me out and you know realizing that you know I'm, I'm there to promote his guys not to give away any trade secrets so all coaches <laughs> out there help us broadcasters out. And, and kudos to all four head coaches here in Morgantown who've been that way very accommodating we appreciate that. Yeah absolutely outstanding we don't have the chance to see them year round we're all season long like these guys and their help is invaluable. Crowd one to see the second inning come to a conclusion right here. A 2 2 count on Ty Coleman. Mountaineer fans get their wish. Bergen works around the leadoff walk to Foster after two in this elimination game. It's 2 0 Mountaineers.
it feels better. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals, presented by Capital One. We're at Monong, let me try that again. Monongalia County Ballpark. And Morgantown, West Virginia, an elimination game. West Virginia, Texas A&M, 2-0 Mountaineers. West Virginia, the visiting team on their home field. Come to bat, what's the top of the order? Always want to say Monongahela. The river which goes through town all the way up through Pittsburgh. But the county here is Monongalia. A fun attempt by Dones. That is a fair ball, turning, spinning, throwing, and making the play. Mikey Honer. Now, yeah, nice hop back by Mikey Honer. Gets out of his squat. Good position. And what I really liked is he caught the ball, set himself, and made a good, strong throw instead of hurrying. A lot of times you'll have a younger catcher that gets a little panicky and opens up that left shoulder and tosses it down the right field line, which is, uh, by the way, a very embarrassing thing to do. It's happened a time or two speaking, back in the day. Speaking from experience, <laughs> not well, very often, but I remember at some point. Randy Mazie came out, the head coach of the Mountaineers. It must have been something involving the catcher Honer with Dones coming out of the batter's box. Didn't go very far with our plate umpire, Sal Giacomantonio. Darius Hill fouled out to the left fielder his first time. Darius Hill hit one of the bigger home runs for West Virginia this year, and he hits one deep towards left field. Blake going back on the run. Bounces. Once off the fence, and there's Hill at second with a one-out double is 25th two-base hit of the year. Hit that ball pretty well the other way. Well, one of the things that was lacking in Mountaineer offense last night was their hitters using the entire field. Kind of looked like Cam Blake. Either one didn't pick it up early Loses the glove. By then, uh, it was an easy stand-up double for Darius Hill. Brings up Marcus Inman, the first baseman. Inman picked up a base hit to left center field back in the first inning. His first hit of the regional. Cute foul off the end of the bat up the line, right past first base coach Mark Ginther. Ohio native Marcus Inman, he's a redshirt junior. A couple of years ago in 2017, only played 16 games when he sustained a season ending leg injury and was eventually granted a medical redshirt for that year. He drives one to center. Deloach, though, seems to have this measured. Going back to second is Hill. He got a late break getting back, but that ball was hit so deep, he's able to tag and go to third without a throw. Well, this isn't as critical as getting to third base with nobody out or one out, but Hill timed it right once he saw that center fielder Zach Deloach was going to catch the ball. He went back to second base, did do his tag. And what that does just puts just that little bit more pressure on your infield defense to make a clean play. Slider strike and that low outside edge to McIntosh, the DH. 
Right into an inning ending fielder's choice in the first inning 0 for 1. Christian Rowe has gone to the full windup with the runner at third two outs and he's ahead of the count now on McIntosh 0 and 2. And yeah, Mountaineers want to keep momentum. They scored a couple last inning. Guy on third. I've already mentioned the importance of two out RBIs. This again keeps that big ball rolling. Well, he's off the high fastball. Smothered by Honer to keep Hill at third. A little different feel on the synthetic surface. Mikey Honer doing a really nice job blocking that ball. So 50 pitches, the 50th coming here shortly from Raw. And meanwhile, he get a visit from the dugout. Well, Coach Rob Childress, also like Randy Mazie, handles all of their pitching. So he makes all the trips to the mound. He'll make whatever mechanical, mechanical or mental adjustments that need to be made. And this may be just a, a little reminder to Christian Roa to trust his stuff. It almost looks like after giving up the home run, just a tad tentative. Still has velocity, but not as much, let's say, conviction in what he's doing. Pitching without conviction, not a good combination. Rowe trying to get through the inning and a ball shot foul. I often get asked as a former catcher, you know, did I get mad whenever pitcher shook me off? And more times than not, I wanted that guy to believe in what he was throwing. It was more important for me that he felt better rather than me feeling better. Full count. McIntosh has battled back here. West Virginia trying to add to a 2 0 lead after a Kevin Brophy home run an inning ago. There's a big 3 2 pitch to McIntosh. And he walks to put runners at the corners. It's the first walk handed out by Christian Roa. And things start to shuffle in the Aggies' bullpen. It's an elimination game, so you got to win to extend your season. Now the bullpen is busy. Chris Weber. Yeah, absolutely right about that. There, when there's no tomorrow, it kind of makes things a little bit easier as far as decision making. There's no need at all to save anybody. Because you got to get to tomorrow. Yeah. It, so use what you got. Exactly. Actually, for our winner today to get to this evening. Yeah, the winner scheduled later tonight to play Duke. <laughs> Ivan Gonzalez beat out an infield hit his first time up. That was followed by the Brophy home run. Gonzalez has now had a hit in all three regional games for West Virginia. He falls behind one and two. You know, good pitcher's pitch. And most pitchers at the D1 level, they've got that fastball down in the way. That's their bread and butter. They can throw that ball knee high outside corner. And for most hitters, that's the toughest pitch to hit. So it's usually a good match. Two on, two outs, and the count goes to two and two. And Darius Hill at third base. I've been watching him. He's 
Well, let's just say he's a little active down there. He was looking to score on anything that gets even remotely away from Mikey Horner. Runner from first going, and it's fouled back. McIntosh has to retreat to first. A 2 2 count on Ivan Gonzalez. Runner from first goes. A ball blasted left center on the run. Deloach makes the catch. Off the bat, looked like it had a chance to find the alley, but it hung up long enough for Deloach to make the play. So West Virginia strands a pair, and it stays 2 0. Through two innings, freshman starter Ryan Berger for West Virginia's walkthrough, but he's also struck out three, Spanky. Well, he's shown some good stuff. Hasn't been what I'd call sharp, but he's been wildly effective. And big thing, he's thrown up two donuts against AM's offense. Throws a first pitch strike to Shoemake. Berger had thrown a first pitch ball and fallen behind in the count to eight straight hitters since a first pitch strike to Shoemake in the first and after getting ahead of Shoemake 0-1 he shoots one into center field for a leadoff hit. Or Shoemake his fourth hit of the regional. And a guy that's already has two stolen bases on for uh, for our tournament. So I'm looking for him to make something happen. I don't believe that Rob Childress will give up and out here. I think especially with two to nothing deficit, I think they can try to steal him. Berger to wear that checks on the runner. And he was leaning. Another throw over there. Shoemake had a stolen base in game one against Duke. He had a stolen base yesterday against Fordham. The third throw over there, and that one was a little closer since it was down right near the ankles. First baseman Edmund was able to put a quick tag on, but Shoemake got back in. Your better base runners more times than not go back on their bellies and reaching with their arms. He bluffed to go. The pitch is swung on and hit foul outside of third. Blum walked in the first, then he stole second, then he stole third. But he and Blake were stranded in the first inning. What has been the best scoring chance to this point for the Aggies? Oh. 
Blom bunts up the third baseline foul. You know, some offensive players prefer to actually bunt for the base hit. They feel more comfortable than actually squaring around for the sacrifice. I think Bryce Blom just trying to get that ball down somewhere. If he's safe at first, great, but he advances that runner. O2 is outside. Richard sophomore Bryce Blum spent his first year at a different SEC school at Ole Miss in 2017 as a freshman. Transferred, sat out last year, and now in his first year playing for the Aggies. Pitch out, not running, but the throw to first. Gonzalez trying to back pick Shoemake there, but he's in. As a head coach, whenever you call a pitch out like that you're looking at tendencies from the other team obviously good candidate to steal at first it's actually kind of fun to see a pitch out. I don't think I've seen a pitch out in the big league game in a few years it's been a while in the majors I'll be the most surprised guy if Shoemaker stays there on this pitch he gets a big break and the high fly is lifted to center. Austin Davis with the catch back to first goes Shoemake. One out. An update now. What's going on in Athens, Chris Cotter? As you mentioned, Chris. Georgia, one of the seven seeds facing elimination, taking on Coastal Carolina and the Chanticleers. Oregon State already out. The defending champ will not defend in Omaha. Shoe makes it first. There's one out. AM has left fielder Cam Blake taking ball one inside. I think every pitch, first pitch to a left-handed hitter he has thrown has been on that inner part. Well, whether it be design or mechanical flaw, you're almost looking that you want to stay away, sink the ball away, see if you can get the ball on the ground. With this synthetic surface as fast as it is, lends itself to better chances at double plays because the ball's getting to the fielders a little quicker than usual. Another one bust inside. 2 and 0 to Blake. The only actual dirt on this field is the mound. Everything else, even what on your screen may look like infield dirt, is a synthetic turf. Right off the end of the bat and cued it foul. Cam Blake wasn't trying to just serve that ball in the left field. He was trying to hit it somewhere parking lot and outside of Buffalo Wild Wings in right center field about a thousand yards away. You're saying he really wanted to hit it a long way. Gets under this. High fly third base side shortstop calling for it and a tough catch made in fair territory right along the line by Tevin Tucker. Called off the third baseman Brophy. Well, the ESPN networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with the regional coverage on ESPN 2, ESPN U, SEC Network, and ESPN 3. Whip around coverage is available through ESPN 3. And check out the bases loaded channel with Matt Shit and Mike Rooney. All coverage also available on the ESPN app. Cleanup hitter, Mikey Honer, a strikeout victim in the first. Runner goes. There's Shoemake. Throw down there. Out is the call. I thought perhaps 
Perhaps he had the left hand in there, and coming out of the dugout is Rob Childress, and he's going to want to review this. Ivan Gonzalez with a nice throw. Shoemake claiming that the tag was high on the shoulder. Thought he got his hand in there quickly, but well, he's taking his mitten off. He's taking his glove off. I thought in real time he beat it. He got the hand in. Kind of tough to tell from the center field angle. This might be the better appearance here, better look. Wow, that's bang bang, but sure is. And quick slap tag by Tyler Dones. That's probably our best view. It was close. I don't know if we've seen anything to overturn the call on the field, which isn't out, though. So it has gone to the NCAA Video Review Center. And the probably the most important thing to keep in mind is the call on the field. And you have to have conclusive proof to overturn. Call on the field that he was out. Boy, that's that's so close. Is there enough for you to overturn it? No. Of course, I'm a catcher, and I love to see catchers throw people out. So, a little biased on that regard, whether it be Mikey Horner or Ivan Gonzalez. So he is called out. The call stands. Wasn't confirmed, but it stands, and it's still two nothing West Virginia at the end of three. Appreciate it, Chris. Back here in Morgantown, number 15 national seed West Virginia and Texas A&M playing an elimination game. 2 nothing Mountaineers. They bat top of the fourth. Kevin Brophy leading off with the two-run home run to left in the second to account for the scoring. His ninth home run of the year. Strike poured in by Christian Roa, 0 and 2. Size wise, Kevin Brophy, not typical of big home run hitter, but a lot of bat speed. Roa on three pitches, dispatches of Brophy this time, and the strikeout, the second in the game for Roa in his first since getting Tyler Dones to begin the game. Got to have the Mountaineer here. It's an elimination game, for goodness sake. Blake 
to left. Cam Blake on a hop it skips past. Trickling towards the fence. TJ Lake motoring for third to throw. Cut off. And Lake's at third with one out. A single and a two base error. Well, a bullet by TJ Lake. Ball out over the plate, driven into left field, and Cam Blake couldn't handle this synthetic surface. On grass, you can get away with it. You can be regret, uh, real aggressive. Once it hits that turf, you're at the mercy of the spin, and he couldn't keep it in front of him. TJ Lake just flying around the bags. He went sliding right past the bag, but fortunate for him, there was no relay throw to third. So he's there with one out. The infield comes in for AM. Tevin Tucker, the batter. Freshman Tevin Tucker from Petersburg, Virginia. Something to drive. Roll having trouble locating that fastball, but just inside the line. And I tell you, Mountaineers, you get your six, seven, and eight producing. That's just such a huge bonus for your offense. Yeah, that's the first hit of the regional for Tevin Tucker, who was 0 for 7 prior to that. Christian Roa begging for the foul call, and it was definitely fair. As a coach giving signs and looking for offense, anytime you have a little bit of excitement, usually a good time, maybe even steal third. I always used to like to call a squeeze play with the guy on third base after chaos. Austin Davis squared, takes ball one. Learned that from my manager with the Pirates for six years, Jim Leland, one of the very best. Davis fouled out to first in his first at bat. Squares and takes low. 2 0. Oh. Tucker's getting a big lead off the second, even though the shortstop Shoemake trying to keep him close. Generally what happens when you have a guy on second base responsibility to keep him close was is usually on second base so it would be Bryce Blom. Braden Shoemake is now having that responsibility and that's direct relation to your hitter. They don't believe that Austin Davis can pull the ball to the left side of the infield. That's why they would switch up coverages. Pickoff attempt, no throw is made by Roa. Number of different pickoffs that teams run. That's a sign usually given either from the dugout or from the shortstop to the pitcher. They acknowledge by maybe picking their jersey or their pants. Freshman Austin Davis making his first start of this regional due to the injury to center fielder Brandon White that occurred last night, though he did stay in the game and finish it out. Soreness keeping White out today. So Davis getting the start. He's made an impact, made a couple of nice catches in center. K 
Cat and Mouse continues between Roa and Tucker. I think Roa's made a couple of good choices. He's turned at second base. You do not have to throw. Looked like Tucker would have been in easy, and the only thing you can do is toss it in the center. Bunted by Davis. The play is at first for Roa, and he airmails first. Tucker scores. The ball's run down by Baum. Second error of the inning for Texas A&M. And it's 4 nothing Mountaineers. And that's going to be all for Roa. Well, I'd have to call this a sack bunt, even though he's trying to bunt for a hit. Christian Roa got to it in plenty of time, but set himself and just airmails this way over first base. They do give Davis credit for a sacrifice, but the E1 and the overthrow brings in the second run of the inning with the pitching change. We'll step aside. Hey Chris, thanks back here in Morgantown. A pitching change in this elimination game as Texas A&M goes to the pen and brings out Chris Weber, who threw well his last time out. That was back on May 22nd against Georgia. Yeah, Weber, left-hander, four pitches, fastball in the upper 80s, curveball, slider, and change, and one of his most effective pitches, the big sweeping hook. Very, very tough against left-handers. He inherits a runner at first. One out. The top of the order is up and a check on the base runner, Austin Davis. Another check. And on those crafty lefties. Sometimes they'll give you that generic move on the first one a little better on the second one and the third one. That's their that's their Jim Dandy. First pitch to the plate a fastball fouled off. This new pitcher Chris Weber a freshman 6 4 210 pounds out of Bernie Texas. He's in the top of the order in Dones. Weber, by the way, an aerospace engineering major. Wow. 
Nice ball up high. Two in the second on a Brophy home run for West Virginia. They've added two more here in the fourth. it up high two and one not a guarantee with Weber on the mound and fastball counts that you'll get a fastball he's got the ability to what we call pitch backwards two two and the whole art of pitching backwards is using one or a couple of your secondary pitches, curveball, slider, or changeup in that fastball count. Something that can be incredibly effective, and we saw that last night from Bryce Jarvis. Boy, Bryce, was he fun to watch. Bryce Jarvis, I was just going to say, the starter for Duke through eight scoreless innings last night against West Virginia and getting the win. Son of former big league pitcher Kevin Jarvis. And he's helped put Duke in the driver's seat in this Morgantown Regional. They're in the regional final, awaiting the winner of this game. Eye on Davis with his 11 steals. Three times he's been caught. Davis is running. The throw goes to first. Now down to Shoemake and the tag for the out. It looked like Davis took off on first movement and AM makes him pay with the 1 3 6 caught stealing. We'll have game two of the NBA Finals tonight on ABC and the ESPN app. With the Raptors up one game to none. It's the fifth time the Warriors have trailed the playoff series under Steve Kerr, but they've won the previous four. Coverage starts with NBA countdown at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Yeah. And that strikeout ends the inning. So just like that, a caught stealing and a strikeout. And that takes care of West Virginia. They do score two. And when we come back, we'll visit with Rob Childress. Thank you. 
Back in Morgantown, the elimination game between West Virginia and A&M goes to the bottom of the fourth. 4-0 Four West Virginia. We'd hope to visit with uh, Rob Childress, head coach of the Aggies. It's an elimination game. His time is tight, so we roll on here into the bottom of the fourth. And the first pitch strike to Mikey Honer. It'll be interesting how Ryan Berger handles the four runs now. It's a little tentative early. This might get him to relax a little bit. Probably looking at another inning, possibly two out of them. And I think they would be very, very happy with his out, his outing. Four, five, and six hitters for AM. Owner fanned in the first. Hit list today, but had a hit in game one. It was against Duke. Then yesterday against Fordham, he was two for five with a couple of runs scored. This is that bat in the first. I want to call one of the pivotal moments of this ball game. They just had second and third. One out. Off the pitcher, Berger. Bare hand, throw to first late. And Berger unable to come up with it, and as a result, Honer is on to begin the AM fourth. And we are going to be delayed here because of weather. The umpires are waving the players off the field. An incoming thunderstorm. Anytime there's lightning within eight miles, they stop play for player and fan safety. So that's what has happened here at 133 local time, Eastern time. This game has been delayed bottom of the fourth with West Virginia leading 4 nothing. Well, the forecast didn't look great. And even though that uh, radar shows a couple of thunderstorms going around us, if lightning is within eight miles, they will stop play. And every lightning strike within eight miles resets a half hour clock before we can resume. So they're getting the only real dirt on the field, the pitcher's mound covered up, anticipating some moisture coming and the teams going back to their dugouts. And in fact, West Virginia is just going to head down to the. just to sing an anthem for the heck of it. presented by Capital One and we are back in Morgantown as the sun has come out after just shy of a two hour rain slash weather delay ready to resume in the bottom of the fourth it's an elimination game between West Virginia and Texas A&M the team sitting pretty as Duke they await the winner of this game the loser season is over the winner faces Duke in the regional final needing to beat the Blue Devils twice to win the regional in case you miss any part of this game a two run home run from Kevin Brophy in the second gave West Virginia a 2-0 lead. They added two more in the fourth. It started 
with T.J. Lake getting a ball to left that Cam Blake misplayed for a two-base error. Trevin Tucker, that is, had a double to drive in a run. And Austin Davis' sack bunt is thrown away by the pitcher that gets away. Roa threw it away. Another run scored. It's 4-0 West Virginia. Texas A&M is the home team in this game. They picked up a leadoff base hit to begin the bottom of the fourth. That's when we were delayed at 1.33 Eastern time, but we are ready to resume from Morgantown. And great to have you with us, along with Mike Spanky Lavalier. I'm Mark Neely, and we have a new pitcher in the game, Zach Ottinger, on the hill now for the Mountaineers. Yeah, Zach Ottinger throwing in the low 90s. He's got to sink the ball to be effective. Secondary pitches are exactly that. They're just in for a mix. So with Honer at first, Frizzell, a left-handed hitting DH do up. Right-handed relief pitcher. Jonathan Dukoff is going to pinch hit here for Frizzell. So we're ready to resume. We appreciate your patience. The sun is out. We're back underway. First pitch swinging foul. And off we go once again for Morgantown. Dukoff, one of the seniors on this team. Quickly, no balls, two strikes. A lot of movement on that fastball. And the key for Ottinger is to stay on top of the ball. Whenever he gets a little bit quick, gets underneath it, and it doesn't have that real good sink. Wave and a miss, and the pinch hitter Dukov. Three pitches down on strikes. So that's the way we resume after an hour 56 delay. Well, so much for the sinker. Here's a good four seamer. Stays above the belt. Great location. I really like the pitchers whenever they get that good fastball. They challenge hitters. Just stay up above the belt. Not so much up and in that back in the day it was kind of something to set it up. There's so many more swings and misses by throwing it really middle of the plate, but just get it up above. So difficult to get your hands up the top of the ball to hit it. Right fielder Logan Foster with a walk in his first plate appearance. Fouls it off to the right. Four runs, six hits for West Virginia. Texas A&M scoreless on two hits and two errors. One of the four West Virginia runs is unearned. Upstairs to Foster. Yeah, and be well while we're in our rain delay, I was you know, trying to think, you know, who was it gonna help? And I really didn't get a feel of anyone gaining an advantage. It wasn't like there was huge momentum on either side. I think our starting pitcher for West Virginia was just about done. Ryan Berger. Was getting up there in pitch count, and he might have been at the end of his rope. So, really, kind of a fresh start for the Mountaineers. Down the right field side, it's Darius Hill angling towards the line and makes the galloping catch. Two outs. You know, I was thinking the same thing along with you, Spanky. Might there be an advantage? I thought perhaps advantage AM if the majority of the crowd decided to bail and not come back, but it seems like a good chunk have stayed around so that home field feel for West Virginia should still be there. It's not uh, sold out jammed like the first two games West Virginia played here, but still a good environment for them. Well, one kicks away a long way and Gonzalez has to go all the way in front of his dugout and owner winds up at second. Yeah, just seeing a little carelessness from Gonzalez. And that's one of the tough things to do after a long rain delay is to get your body and your mind up to speed. You can do a bunch 
with your body, but it's really tough to get into that game mode again right off the get-go, especially as a catcher. Coleman, it's a slow roller right side. Tyler Dones. Well, after the hour, 56-minute delay, Ottinger comes in, retires all three batters he faces. Hey, you went to coach? I'm looking for him. Copy. What's up, man? How's it going, fellas? Good, man. Just been. What y'all been doing? Trying to crank it back up, man. <laughs> Gets hard after a couple hours. All these recruits, we told them it never rains in Morgantown. Ah. All right, here we go. In elimination game, 4 nothing West Virginia, a chance to visit with their head coach, Randy Mazie. We had just about two hours there, coach. What do you do to kind of keep the guys engaged and pump it back up? Man, I'm a big fan of college baseball. I was watching all the other games around the country, <laughs> seeing who was doing what. Well, coach, you got a new guy on the mound for you. Give us a little rundown. Berger uh, didn't seem like he was sharp, but did he do enough for you? Man, you look up there at the bottom of that scoreboard where it says 0, 0, 0, 0. That's as sharp a number as I've ever seen. <laughs> and, and on the top of that, there's a couple of twos up there. How's your offense been doing so far to your liking? You know, uh, Brophy's got uh, more RBIs than he has hits this year, and that's why, because when he runs into a ball, he can do damage, you know. And getting a lead in a game like this, you know, it, this is the hardest game in a regional mm -hmm. coming off of an emotional loss uh, last night and then playing a team who won the day before. So, uh, I, in my whole career, I've always said this is the hardest game to win in, in regional play. So to get a lead, uh, hopefully that uh, eliminates uh, all the emotion from last night. Hey, let me hit you with one more question. Because of last night, which was really, there's so many adjectives I could use for that game right here. <laughs> but uh, what in your mind and what, what, what was the message after that really heartbreaking night last night? You know, I told him we've, uh, our program has come so far. Uh, the evolution of the baseball program. You know, we went to our first uh, regional two years ago in 20 years, and it's hard to win a regional the first time you play in one. And then two years later, we host one and play in front of uh, two packed houses in a row. Uh, that, that's hard for our kids to, to play in front of sometimes because we've been telling them all year that you, in our state, we're representing, you know, two million people. You know, we, we have so many Mountaineer fans around the nation. and. And I think they felt the pressure of that last night. There was so much emotion, and it felt like every one of our at bats, uh, we were trying to uh, trying to trying to hit a home run for every every one of those two million people who were out there rooting for the Mountaineers. Yeah, absolutely. We'll let you get back to it. You got an infield hit to start this inning. Thanks for the, well, the uh, time. You know, Inman's not going to bunt or anything, so I could stay here as long as you want. <laughs> sure, we'll, we'll keep you for another hitter if you like. Yeah, this is a guy we need to get on track. You know, he's been uh, uh, he's been swinging and missing a little bit too much, but he's a guy that can drive runs. And you know, he's leading our team in RBIs. And you know, this point of the game, you know, Spank, when it's four to nothing, the next team to score has a big advantage in the game. You know, we can either extend the lead or they can jump right back into it. So this is a this is a really big inning for us. Yeah, I was thinking that uh, exactly. You know, with the rain delay, who's got the advantage? I didn't feel like either team, uh, you know, would benefit from it. Uh, but I know you've got a fresh guy in there with uh, Ottinger. 
Um, and that looks like it might find the alley. Nope, it will be caught. Hung up and Foster over to make the catch. You know, but, uh, you know, with him, how, how long are you looking for, for Zach to be out there for you? You know, he threw four innings in the uh, in a regional game against Texas Tech in relief of uh, Berger. So uh, if he's pitching good, you know, at this time of the year, you're looking for heroes on the mound. So uh, he's going to stay in there as long as he's getting out. McIntosh, your cleanup hitter, comes up. You did a little breakdown on Inman. I'll let you do one on McIntosh here. Yeah, same thing. Guy's got uh, nine homers and sure would like to see ten right here. But, uh, you know, he's uh, uh, last last month or so, he's been uh, not driving as many balls as he had early on in the year. So uh, these are the guys, you know, last night between him and Inman, they struck out six times between the two of them. But it seemed like 40 times, you know, when two guys in the middle of your lineup keep doing that. And, Darius was on base every time. Whack deep left field. Gone. Uh, By the way, look at my hat. Look at my hat. I always call it. I always uh, call it. Am I allowed to cheer for the Mountaineers on national television? It, it's your it's your inning and your interview. And <laughs> we'll let Alec Manoa interject as well. You know, he's uh, that's what Manoa does. He helps us win games even when he's not pitching, you know, because he's our he's our energy guy and he felt like he let the team down last night by by giving up four runs, so he came to the park ready to win today. Well, a two-run blast for McIntosh. His 10th. I don't think these guys are going to let me give up the headset right now. If I took this headset <laughs> off, I'd have to get through this crowd, and they'd probably kill me. Well, we'll let you explain. We saw a picture of McIntosh in the dugout with, with the, the Viking horns on, whatever. Tell, tell me about that. Is there little tradition there at all? Yeah, Sam, Sam Kessler, our big personality guy, the closer, he came up with that at the beginning of the year. And man, it sure is good to see. Oh. You got Gonzalez. Well, Coach, uh, that's kind of kind of special right there, asking for the two-run bomb and having your guy go ahead and blast one like that. I, you need to do that a little more often. I'm starting to get a complex here because I think our record when I'm on the headset for an entire inning, we've scored uh, 10 runs in the innings that I'm not part of the offense. So uh, I'm starting to get a little bit of complex that <laughs> so we're a better team when I'm on this end of the dugout. Well, your catcher, Gonzalez, has singled, scored a run, one for two. And we were talking in, during his first at bat. You know, I looked and I said, you know, the numbers may not be impressive, but it looked to me like Ivan has had a really good regional catching and with the bat. Uh, he's had a good regional that way because he's had a good year that way. He's, I'm going to miss him so much. You know, I, Spank, you know, I've told people, a long time. Your your starting pitcher is only as good as the guy that's catching him, and, and he makes our pitching staff better. That's why that's why we led the Big 12 in pitching this year. It's it's no secret. It's because of Pudge, and and he's quietly hitting you know 289 and, and giving us some offense. Wax one towards right. Foster going back, and it's over his head. One bounce to the fence, and Gonzalez chugs into second with his 14th double of the year. If you think I'm going anywhere right now, you guys are out of your mind. I'm starting to think you're on to something, Coach. <laughs> I'll go sit on the berm if I have to. I know everybody from A&M, though, is telling us, do something different, but hey, we don't mind the three-man booth right now. <laughs> I've always wanted to do what you guys do when I retired. If I knew we were going to win this regional, I'd call for early retirement right now. <laughs> well, you guys have it. Some home runs in this game. We're going to take a look at a highlight package. We don't have a monitor for you down there, but it started with Brophy and then a home run by McIntosh. And he crushed out to left center field. So a couple of two-run home runs for West Virginia has opened up a 6-0 lead. I mean, the biggest out of the game to me, you guys know, after a rain delay, they got a man on first, nobody out. Uh, to stop that inning, you know, it's... Uh, baseball's a little bit like basketball. Defense can give you momentum, you know, and I think getting out of that inning, uh, a lot of guys come running off the field super excited uh, to grab, put bats in their hands, and I think that has a lot to do with uh, uh, this inning offensively. Yeah, Oninger came in and just needed three pitches to strike out the pinch hitter, Dukov, after our resumption. Here's Brophy, and he fouls one back this way. What do you guys think of our atmosphere here? I don't, I don't get it. 
You guys ask me questions all the time. Well, Let me you, ask you a couple. We've been extremely impressed the last couple of nights. But but like you, and you you explained kind of what your team attitude was last night. There's some pressure on you guys. And even Spanky mentioned that. said, hey, there's a big crowd here. You're playing in the, in the regionals, and it has to be some pressure on that West Virginia team. But it's an impressive atmosphere, no question. Yeah, that, that game last night was much easier for, for Duke to play than it was for us, you know, because we're, we haven't we have been in this atmosphere before, you know. We're, we're trying to make all these people so proud of us. Uh, but I told the guys going into today, they're already proud, man. You don't have to put any undue pressure on yourself to do anything more than, than you've been doing the whole season. So I think we're playing a lot more relaxed today. Well, Randy, I'll tell you about the atmosphere whenever... You guys finished the second and third innings, the bottom half. I got goosebumps, you know, with punch outs and the crowd going crazy. I, it, it is so much fun to watch, and I'm enjoying it so much. Uh, gosh, this is uh, this is outstanding. Yeah, you know, Bergert went out there and walked a couple in the first inning, which he hasn't done all year, and he just created a little bit of drama. He got the crowd going in the first inning with those punch outs the end of the inning. We're able to miss two and two. We were talking about his previous start, Bergert, which came for you in, in the Big 12 tournament, where he was so impressive against Texas Tech for five innings. And that seemed like maybe the win that you guys thought, hey, we got a good chance to host a regional now heading into the Big 12 title game. Yeah, you know, that was that was the big game. We went into it thinking it was it was going to be us or somebody else. And to get a big win, you know, Bergert and Ottinger went out there and one hit uh, Texas Tech, one of the best offensive teams in the country. Another base hit into right for Brophy and advancing 90 feet goes Gonzalez. The runners are at the corners with one out. Fourth hit of the inning for West Virginia and already their 10th of the game. Yeah, you know, against a team like this, they, they've been here before too, you know. They've, they've played in front of big crowds and big atmospheres, so this, this isn't going to phase them, so we need to keep adding runs as uh, as much as we can here you know we can't every run at this point is super important and we're going to get a pitching change and Bryce Miller getting loose for Texas A&M well we are going to take a break Coach, hate to do this to you. We're going to take a break. Okay, you guys know how this rolls. You know, uh, we're superstitious as a group, so. We'll stand by. We're looking at the home runs to break and uh, a replay of your ace. Yes. Even you hug after that home run. We'll be right back. AM goes to the bullpen once again. This time they bring out a sophomore, right hander Bryce Miller. Now, Bryce pitching in the upper 80s, lower 90s if he's getting it up there real good. A four pitch guy, curveball slider and change. A true competitor. Well, he inherits runners at the corners, one out. 
Our thanks for the time from West Virginia head coach Randy Mazey. And if any of the head coaches wants to stay on with us for a complete segment, that invitation is out there for Rob Childress of Texas A&M or Chris Pollard, the Duke head coach. We appreciate the time. It was fun to chat with him. And as coincidence would have it, his team's offense really came alive when he was on our headset. Well, I'm a little intimidated. Uh, I'm afraid for my job right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's 6-0 West Virginia. This is an elimination game. Winner plays Duke later tonight in the regional final. T.J. Lake steps in. DJ grounded out in the second, but his last at bat, an inning ago in the fourth, singled, hit that line drive to left. At the left fielder, Blake misplayed for a couple of bases, and he wound up at third. And eventually would score what was the third run of the game for West Virginia. Right in on the hands, and it's 0-2. Well, good hard fastball. Down and in. Came out of the hand and looked like it was going to be in the happy zone before it got to home plate. It was a little bit too low for Lake. Yeah. Holding it on two. Third pitcher of the game now for Texas A&M. Next one for Bryce Miller. Richard Jr. T.J. Lake from Toledo, Ohio. His mom, Karen, one of the athletes in the family, played basketball in Toledo. Out to right center field, ball fading, but coming in, caught by Foster, tagging up from third. Gonzalez to throw home. They got him. And a double play ends the inning. And West Virginia settles for two runs. Well, maybe that defensive play. Will spark Texas A&M. Logan Foster gets the ball, gets his feet set. Look at this throw. Excellent throw right on the money. Good tag by Horner. And he's gone. Back in Morgantown, 6 nothing. West Virginia on top of Texas A&M in this elimination game. Eight, nine, and one batters for the Aggies. 
Zach Ottinger came on after the hour 56 minute rain delay retired all three batters he faced faces Deloach to begin the bottom of the fifth and a ground ball towards the middle Stones can't come up with it first West Virginia miscue of the game now Tyler Dones having a little trouble in the field seems like he gets it to it okay but one of the things to think about all our younger infielders out there, you kind of want to get your glove out front. The glove got kind of stuck underneath them. You know, your hands don't work quite as well whenever you can't extend them. So it's just something that perhaps the surface a little quicker, maybe a little bit different spin. Hard to tell from here, but play that I, you, you got to expect your second baseman to make. Ty Coleman, a strikeout victim in the second. He hit one of the four home runs yesterday. This ball off the glove of Brophy into left field. Deloach heading for third, and runners are at the corners. Nobody out. And now here comes AM. Thanks to a couple of errors back to back. One on the second baseman Dones, and now one on the third baseman Brophy. No, Ottinger is doing what he does best, giving up ground balls. This one here should have been tailor-made double play. Looked like Brophy trying to throw it before he caught it. And the top of the order comes up for Texas A&M. And their top hitter this year, Braden Shoemake. You make fly to center in the first and in the third inning single to center but was caught stealing on a close play. You know, needless to say this is a big at bat for A&M and you want to have your best hitter up at the plate. And if you have any notions of coming back Shoemake's got to come up and uh, Stand up, be counted. Double play ball to short, out at second. Dones relay. Do get a run. Deloach crosses the plate. But West Virginia will trade that run for the double play. Their 40th double play turn this year. Well, personal tip of the cap. Zach Ottinger, the pitcher. He threw two ground balls, should have had two outs. End up first and third, nobody out. Stays with the game plan, believes in his stuff, gets a very, very good hitter to ground in that double play. That's absolutely huge for the Mountaineers. Base is empty for Bryce Blom. <laughs> 0 for 1 officially is Blom with a fly ball to center, but reached on a walk in the first and stole second and third bases. And Ottinger has come in this game pitching with a lot of confidence. In the two previous games, we've yet to see the the back half or the closers or the closers from Mountaineers, Sam Kessler, Madison Jeffrey. They're both rested and ready. Full count with two outs on Blum. You know, home run yesterday is team leading ninth of the year, eighth of the year, that is. It's a drive to left, and TJ Lake got the glasses on. Actually, have to contend with some sun at this point. Couple of errors, and West Virginia gives AM an unearned run, but it could have been much worse for Randy Mazie's team.
Winner of this Morgantown Regional advances to the Super Regional. And we'll take on the winner of the Vanderbilt Nashville Regional. Vandy right now in the driver's seat in their regional. Waiting on Indiana State or Ohio State in the regional final. Sixth inning. Devin Tucker leading off. Tucker with an RBI double to left his last time up and scored a run. And to me, a uh, big part of this um, Mountaineer lead and feeling of a little bit of comfort. They get the two run bomb from Brophy, but Tucker, you know, number eight in the lineup, usually number nine in the lineup, comes up with that double. The fans for the first out. Tonight, the Sunday Night Baseball crew in New York for the series finale between the Red Sox and Yankees with the Bronx Bombers going for the sweep. I have 61 meetings, Yanks 32 wins, Sox 29. And our coverage begins at 6 Eastern on ESPN and the app with baseball tonight, Sunday Night Countdown. First pitch just after 7 Eastern. Austin Davis laid down a sacrifice bunt in the fourth inning. The ball that was thrown away by the then pitcher starter Christian Roa for Texas A&M. Davis starting in center field with Brandon White, the everyday center fielder now playing due to soreness after colliding with the center field fence in the first inning yesterday. Davis waiting to see a strike and hasn't yet. It's 3-0. I'm being a younger player and your number nine guy and reserve player, you'd almost think he'd be taking two here. Didn't have to take two. Watched four. He takes first base. Back to the top of the order. Tyler Dones hitless today 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. He had a two hit game two days ago. Their win over Fordham and then one hit last night against Duke. Duke awaits the winner of this game. The like winner of this game would have to beat them twice. Like to think that Mountaineer's going to get something happening here. Don'ts handles the bat real well. Davis at first base. West Virginia's been known throughout the season to use their speed. Kind of think something might happen. Bluffing a go was Davis. Pitch under the hands of Don'ts. Eleven thefts for Davis this year. Davis is running this time. Got a terrific jump, and he's in easily in the ball into center field. He's going to go to third, and he's going to make it without a throw there. Well, Austin Davis showing his speed. Got a terrific jump. It's a stolen base, E2, and he's at third. One of the toughest things for a catcher to do is put that thing in your pocket when you know you don't have a chance. Honer looking to make something happen, and Davis, like you said, just tremendous jump, no chance. Ball ended up hitting in the center field. And so Davis just walks in at third. Slid into second and third base. You can tell this is home, his home field because he knew exactly how much he would glide. And he's going to score with the infield end. Dones with a base hit. His 32nd RBI of the year makes it 7 to 1, West Virginia. 
That's how you manufacture a run right there if you're on ears. Absolutely. You get the infield in, real quick surface. Shoe makes back and ends up making this play, uh, I would uh, tend to think. And that's all Austin Davis. That's his run right there. If he's at second base, I think it's a, a routine ground ball to shoe make, but they force the issue. In on the hands of Hill and a pop up coming down the third base line and foul territory almost dropped by Ty Coleman, but he hung on. Two outs. Well, Hill, who had hits his last two times up, jumped on that first pitch. Coleman had to come down the line. <laughs> yeah, never take anything for granted. A little juggling act by Ty Coleman. And it's funny because I've known some defenders, uh, especially infielders, that can handle any ground ball you can possibly put at them, but they have a little trouble with pop-ups. Now to play to the right at the bat of Inman. Why would that be? Just kind of one of those fluky things? Yeah, one of the best defenders I ever played with, Terry Pendleton. Oh, third. Played with the Cardinals and uh, with the Braves. Terry didn't like uh, the pop-ups. He, um, yeah, he just uh, tried a number of different techniques and just uh, was one of those. Of course, you've had Ozzie Smith at shortstop and say, hey, Ozzie, take him. And Terry Pendleton was an outstanding defender at third base. Oh, absolutely fabulous. I mean, he was an acrobat, some of the plays that he made. Inman one for three. He's fly to center and fly to right his last two times up. West Virginia has scored seven runs. Each run has been scored by a different player. And the last one. An answer to A&M's run in the bottom half of the fifth. There goes Dones. Throw down to second, a one hopper, quick tag, safe. 20th steal of the year for Tyler Dones. Well, I think Mike Honer had a chance to toss him out. This ball ended up skipping. Here's the end of the play. Yeah, pretty close, but I think he got his foot in. I like the, and I'll call it old school now, feet first slide. You see so many guys going in head first and over sliding the bag. He planted that foot and stayed on the base. I don't know why guys don't look back at like the old Lou Brock pop-up slide. Those were the best slides ever, I thought. Man, he, he was... He would slide and pop up in a fraction of a second. The 2 2 coming to Inman. Got him. So the strikeout ends the inning, but West Virginia does pick up a run on the Dones RBI single. It's the midpoint of the sixth and an elimination game for Morgantown, and it's 7 1 West Virginia. Got uh, nine homers and sure would like to see ten right here. <laughs> Got uh, nine homers and sure would like to see ten right here.
NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. The elimination game between Texas A&M and West Virginia moves to the bottom of the six, seven, one Mountaineers. Winner plays Duke. A little later on tonight. And the winner would have to beat Duke twice, once tonight and once tomorrow to win the regional. Cam Blake pulls it foul. Well, if you're A&M, Spanky, you're down six, but you're only still just past the midway point of the game. There are a lot of outs left to play with. Well, and that's exactly uh, your situation. You get 12 outs. You got to make them the toughest 12 outs that you possibly can. Grounded to first off the glove of Inman, but recovers and throws it off the mid of Ottinger. Well, West Virginia last couple innings kind of falling apart defensively. Inman was able to recover in time. It looked like if Ottinger had just caught the ball, they could have gotten the out. But if Inman had fielded it cleanly the first time, he probably could have taken himself. Yeah, it is a situation where you can get him an error to Inman because he should have made the play, but eventually you have to give it to Ottinger because if he would have just caught the relay to him, can't call it a double play, but <laughs> he should have been out twice. Official score decides to give the error to Inman, the first baseman. Third error just in the last over an inning for the West Virginia defense. Mikey Honer, the catcher, blasts one towards center on a line. Austin Davis coming in. He plays that on a bounce, and it's two on, nobody out. Second hit today for Honer. Well, I have to kind of wonder with West Virginia with the three blunders here in the last uh, two half innings. And maybe the moisture that we did get has made some kind of difference. I'm not sure if it was that or doesn't seem like the ball's reacting differently than earlier. But just a lack of concentration. Dukov came on as the pinch hitter when we resumed at about 3.30 local time and struck out. Yeah, the only part of the field that was covered during what little rain we did get was the mound because it's the only spot that has actual dirt. But that synthetic turf reportedly drains really well with a little moisture it did get. But perhaps it is playing a little bit differently than, than prior to the delay. Mound made of clay. Everything else is synthetic turf on this field. Two, but AM really is one swing away right here from being right back in the game. The second straight time, Ottinger fans Dukov on three pitches. And that's the first out of the inning. Well, Ottinger's two fastballs are actually two completely different pitches. We just saw that good, hard four seam fastball that kind of rode up and away from Dukov. And then we've seen that good sinker ball that Shoemake hit into a double play the inning prior. Strike one to Logan Foster. Two on now, one out in the A&M sixth. Out into center field in Austin Davis. Tagging from second. Going to third is Blake. First and third, two outs. So Blake able to advance 90 feet. 
The batter will be Hunter Coleman, who's flight out twice. The day after his first career multi-homer game yesterday. Not out of the inning yet, but previous inning he pitched over some of those mistakes. This inning, doing a nice job. That's what you want, your teammates picking you up. Ball on a strike. Base hit earlier in the inning by Honer, the first hit that Ottinger has allowed. Three total hits for Texas A&M. All singles. Two of them by Honer. Three and one. Let's see what Hunter Coleman gets. Ball four high is what he got, and the bases are loaded. So, some of which not his own doing, but Ottinger is in a jam here with the bases loaded, two outs in the sixth. Well, we've seen AM thus far in this tournament. Had some opportunities. Today's game in the first inning had a couple guys in scoring position, less than two outs. You're right, they're one swing away from getting back in this. Deloach has reached on an error and scored the one Texas A&M run. He's hit three home runs this season. Gets jammed, rolls it out to second base. Tyler Dones takes his time. Turned into a fairly close play, but out nonetheless, and they leave the bases loaded. Got uh, nine homers and sure would like to see ten right here. Well, West Virginia's D.H. Paul McIntosh is going to lead off this inning. Last time he was up, we were chatting with his head coach, Randy Mazey, who called the shot. He's got uh, nine homers and sure would like to see ten right here. And indeed, McIntosh did hit number ten. The ace of his pitching staff. Alec Manoa giving his head coach a hug, and here's McIntosh 
After that two run home run in the fifth he's one for two with a walk. And that from the uh, ask and you shall receive category. One ball one strike. So home run number 10 produced RBI's 33 and 34 on the year for McIntosh a couple innings ago. Leads off the seven with a bouncy ball to Ty Coleman who throws across a little high and safe as Hunter Coleman had to come up and the foot came off the bag momentarily but enough the McIntosh crosses safely and they're asking for a video review from the dugout of Texas A&M. Well game's gotten a little sloppy this fairly routine play. Well, I, I got to think that this one might be overturned. I think he gets down. Well, it's a tough angle there. Question is, is that right foot back on the base when he comes down? Yeah, from that angle, he comes back down on the base. And I'm with you now, Spanky. I think there's enough to overturn this. Right now it's in the hands of the NCAA Video Review Center. And the one thing to keep in mind, I don't care how many calls that I get right, I'm never going to put on the blue suit. No <laughs> chance. Too hard a job. And I'm too sensitive. And I know that nobody believes that. And it's a thankless job. Because <laughs> you can be perfect and nobody says a word. Again, the call on the field is safe. Now if this would have happened last night. Oh boy. <laughs> I, I shudder it, to think. It, it was. Because uh, it did happen like four times. We'll, we'll just call it a hostile crowd. Whenever umpires were relaying the decisions. And they say he is out. So that saves Ty Coleman an error. And the leadoff batter back at Tosh is gone. Well, I'll say this. We, we've had a lot of video reviews. But in the end, I think they've gotten the calls correct, or at least done them what they should have, either have the call confirm, stand, or change. They've been right on the money every time. Fouled away by Ivan Gonzalez, who has a couple of hits, including a double. And keep in mind that we get a bunch of different angles. We get it in slow motion. Four, four or five different looks at it. You know, these guys are having to call the plays bang, bang. How far away are we from an electronic, so to speak, strike zone in Major League Baseball? Well, I'm, I'm not going to call myself a purist, but yeah, I'd like to have the umpire back there. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk to a machine. You know, if I'm <laughs> behind the dish, you well, know, I guess I, it, what, it, what they've talked about is there would be an umpire back there, but he'd just be saying strike or ball compared to what the electronics. But you're still saying you want a human back there. Yeah, I want a human back there. I uh, think you're going to really take away from the game. I think that's why we have the video review that's uh, taking place. It's uh, for that fact. Um, I, I'm not absolutely sure the technology is good enough yeah, know, I don't to think go it ahead either, right yeah, to, to have balls and strikes. I, I question some of the calls that I see whenever I'm watching games. And they have the tracking systems and I think that's that they the, use. the misnomer. People will watch Major League Baseball games and see the K zone and see an umpire call a ball that looks like a strike. But that doesn't mean that the technology is flawless. It's not. Comes a 2 2 pitch. And the uh, fact that there are certain times whenever a player may be, let's say, not on the best side of an umpire, and he might need to teach him a little bit of a lesson. 
and that's uh, happens less now than it did and that was part of the game and how players and umpires used to police things. It's certainly part of your job as a big league catcher was to have some kind of relationship with all the different umpires who would be behind the plate at some point to kind of help you, your team, and your pitcher. Well, there was a fine line. You know, like to catch more flies with honey than with vinegar, so I don't say that I was always complimentary of the guys, but I think as a catcher, just be truthful with them. Mm -hmm. You know, as whenever they get it right, you know, even though it was a, a call that you didn't want, you know, that just, you know, you, you tell them, yeah, you got it right. Hopefully that pays dividends to your pitcher end. Left field, Foster, it's over his head. Midway up the fence, played well by Foster off the carom, but it's still a double for Gonzalez, his third hit of the game and his second extra base hit today. Well, Gonzalez gets a pitch up and out over the plate and just drills this ball. Had a lot of carry on it. Thought initially, you know, maybe just over the head of Foster. This ball gets halfway up the fence. West Virginia bullpen was looking for another dinger. But uh, well, I tell you this, Ivan Gonzalez has opened up my eyes. He's had a really good regional. He really has and really has stung the ball and been... And it visits on the mound, and I'll remind you that the ESPN networks are bringing you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with the regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip around coverage is also available through ESPN3 and the Bases Loaded channel, and all coverage is available on the ESPN app. Speaking of plate umpires, Sal Giacomo Antonio is our plate umpire here. He goes out to the mound to speed things along. Yeah, this is the old go out to the mound, waste a little bit of time. You get reliever in the bullpen, might need a few more pitches. That being Joseph Moo Minifee getting loose. And that was exactly what Rob Childress wanted. He wanted to get Minifee ready. Now he comes out. And they can make the change here with Brophy coming up. He's had a good day offensively. So they'll lift Bryce Miller at this point and bring in Minifee. And with the pitching change, we'll step aside here in Morgantown. New pitcher out of the bullpen for Texas A&M is freshman Joseph Moo Menifee. Well, Moo Menifee, four-pitch pitcher, good fastball, curveball. His best pitch probably is slider and a changeup, but a, a guy that uh, he, Coach Childress calls him a throwback. Guy that just loves the game, loves to compete. He takes over on the hill, inherits 
Gonzalez at second with Kevin Brophy coming up who's had a good day today including a home run his first time up. He came in the second inning off the starter Christian Roa. And he'd really been getting beat away in this regional but that time he made the adjustments making. They really did and you know since then he's kind of gone back to his previous self and I think Randy Mazie said it past uh, you know a guy that's got some great bat speed and 10 home runs on the year now and whenever he runs into one you, you see it and it's power to all fields it's just a matter of whether he can make a little better contact. Lefty against lefty. Asking for an appeal and no swing. Two hits today for Brophy, including that home run. He was one for eight in the regional coming into today. So this has been his best offensive day. Pitcher Minifee, a freshman. And Tommy John surgery in March of 2018. Didn't pitch at all in the fall. Oh, and zips right back into the press box. I don't know about you, Niels, but I'm not ready for that hot shot. No, no one any part of that. Those days are long gone. I do not, as much as I like the city of Morgantown, do not need to make a trip to the immediate care center. It's just up the hill. <laughs> Won't have to go very far. I know far. it's close, but I prefer not to make that trip. Three balls and a strike on Brophy. And he walks Brophy. He's on base for a third time. Yeah, it's one of the instances when, as a coach, you bring in a lefty to face the left hander, and whenever he gives them a free pass, you scratch your head. Find out there's not as much hair as there used to be. What's there's gray. Boy, I tell you, it's tough. Sometimes when your bullpen comes in and fails to get the ball over the plate. West Virginia, by the way, has had at least one hit in every inning. Contrast that to last night, where they had all kinds of problems. With the Duke starting pitcher Bryce Jarvis, the ball kicks off Homer and each runner advances. It's a wild pitch. And this also forces AM to bring their infield in. They can least afford to. Give up any more runs down six. TJ Lake has a hit and a run scored. One for three. And he hits it through the drawn in infield. Gonzalez scoring. Brophy to the plate. The right fielder Foster. Little juggle of the ball. No chance then to get the second runner. Two runs are in, and it's nine to one, West Virginia. They sure could use some of those runs last night. Here, Lake hit the ball between the three and four slot, first base and second. Again, the infield in makes that job so much easier on your hitter. And with this fast surface, nearly impossible. Unless that ball's hit right at you, range is very limited. 
And now an eight run lead. Still only one out here in the top of the seventh. Batter is the shortstop, Tevin Tucker. Runner goes. Pitches a strike and in with a head first slide is late. Well, we talked about this topic one of the games, I believe, yesterday, Spanky. There are certain levels of baseball where you're up eight late. Stealing is kind of frowned upon, but this is an elimination game. So you're playing for your season. Well, exactly. In previous tournaments and during the season, you have the run rule here in the regionals. That's not the case. Not, not, okay. not the case. And you have a situation where, you know, it's the game has changed. It's evolved. But when you're in a tournament, you know, that's seen offenses put up big numbers. We saw yesterday how many runs that Texas A&M put up in a hurry. Five in the first. So, hey, you just got to keep your foot on the gas pedal. It was a wise man with the last name of Bear that once said something along the lines of it ain't over till it's over. Strikeout is the second out. Here's Austin Davis. He does have a run scored and a sack bunt. Has walked, stolen a base. One thing he hasn't done yet today to pick up a base hit. He's the lone West Virginia hitter in the batting order without a hit. Everybody else has at least one. Well, that's not to say he hasn't contributed because he's played well in center field in the absence of Brandon White, who's out with soreness after colliding with the center field fence early in yesterday's game. He made a catch on Shoemake to begin the game up against the left center field fence, which almost eerily was very similar to the Brandon White play. We look at him in the dugout yesterday. Davis was able to hang on and who knows how the game plays out. The sure. first batter of the game winds up with extra bases for A&M is momentary delay as something got out of way from the bullpen. Two and oh. Look back at T.J. Lake, who stolen base by the way earlier in this inning, his third of the year. I know the Mountaineers are enjoying putting up a nine spot, but they continue on and win this ball game. They're gonna need some more for the second one. You wish you could bank them. Three and zero. Oh. That inside corner, three and one. Freshman Austin Davis. He's on base again with a walk. Second walk given up by Minifee here since coming in earlier in the inning, and that brings Rob Childress out again. He's going to make another change. That was a rather brisk walk by Coach Childress. Obviously, a little agitated. Casey Collick, right hander, coming on. We'll come back after this.
Duke's already here. They're getting ready for the regional final game with the winner of this one. They have beaten Texas A&M and West Virginia to get to that spot. And got great pitching from Ben Gross and Bryce Jarvis. And from what we hear, left-hander Bill Chilari may be their starter tonight. Casey Collick becomes pitcher number five in this game for A&M. You know, Kallick has served as their closer this year. Somehow, someway, looking to stop, look for their offense to catch fire somehow, some way. But big guy, middle 90s, slider change. Strike one to Tyler Dones. As the lineup turns over for West Virginia. Good hard sinking fastball that last one 94 miles an hour. Upstairs one and one. Kalik has come on. This is a guy who's been in that closer's role for AM. 12 saves, just too shy of the single season record at AM. And his job right now is to keep it where it is, and that's an eight run lead for West Virginia. Pretty interesting. TJ Lake and Austin Davis both were getting ready to advance and steal. Kalik just held it just enough to where they started back towards their bases and then delivered to the plate. Off the plate away, three and one. When you get guys out on base and they are at least looking like they're wanting to steal and they've got some actions like that it can be a little unnerving to pitchers and take a little concentration away. Another walk the third of the inning. And the bases are loaded. For a team that has lived on their pitching all season, it hasn't been a great day for a and pitchers today. You know, they've been a little sloppy in the field, but combination of Mountaineers squaring it up, playing some long ball, stole some bases, some clutch hitting, all oh, which was missing last night in the Duke game. Ball one from Colic. AM led the SEC in ERA, top five in the nation also in that department. Strikeout to walk ratio, number one in the nation. It has not been the case today. I was fairly close to Bach. Kalik out of the windup, stepped back with the right th foot, but almost moved his hands before he did that. Three walks in the inning handed out by Ain and pitching. Five walks total today. Darius Hill has not needed a walk. He's been on base twice, once with a double and once with an infield hit, and has scored once. Outside corner, strike two. You mentioned the five walks. You add three errors. That's eight extra base runners that you really shouldn't count on.
Hit on the hands and Hill strikes out. But West Virginia picks up two more. The two came from T.J. Lake. Now well, T.J. Lake adding to the hip parade. Line drive, right field, scores a couple. The Mountaineer offense on fire. It's the bottom of the seventh as we get through seventh inning stretch time here in Morgantown and Texas A&M the home team in this game. Bring up the nine one and two hitters Ty Coleman leading off. Ty 0 for two today having reached on an error his last plate appearance. And hits another one on a smash pass Brophy that's somewhat similar to the one he hit last time that went for an error but that one had some more juice on it. Coleman's on to begin the inning. That yeah, ball was stung and if there's any moisture on the synthetic surface that had a little skip and giddy up to it. Ball hit right on the button. Scored a base hit for Ty Coleman. All of his friendly teammates in the dugout would be mentioning probably Ole. Ole. There's Shoemake. He's one for three with a single. He grounded into a double play. His last time up in the fifth, which brought in a run, but no RBI. Towards short by the diving Tevin Tucker and into left. That is the fifth hit of the regional for Shoemake and Tucker is shaken up. A little slow getting up but now gets to his feet. Well when he dove outstretched with the glove sometimes that glove gets stuck. Looks like he rolled it over. Perhaps jamming his wrist into that surface. And the synthetic turf has that the ground up rubber. Those pellets, sometimes you get a stream of those. Two on, nobody out. Things shuffling around in the West Virginia bullpen. But Zach Ottinger, who came in after the nearly two hour rain delay, done his job to this point out of the bullpen for West Virginia. And Zach really is toughened up whenever he's gotten into trouble. Some of it his own making this inning, some of it from his defenders' previous innings, but he's done a really nice job of limiting damage. Straightaway center. Austin Davis wants to go about 380 feet back to get it. Both runners tag and will make it. 
Coleman to third, Ty Coleman. Shoemake down to second on the long fly ball hit by Blom. Well, if you're AM, you're not giving up the ship yet. You still got some outs, but you are down eight. And chasing in a couple right here would send it in the right direction at least. Yeah, in my opinion here, must score. Yeah, you must score too. You got to get both of these runners in. They have not had a hit with a runner in scoring position today. 0 for 8. Blake's reached on a walk and an error on his 0 for 2. Two and nothing. West Virginia defense playing deep, more than willing to get an out and give up a run. And there's the base hit to right field. a and was looking for it. Ty Coleman scores, throw in by Hill, and in with a slide is Shoemake. It's nine to three on a two-run base hit for Cam Blake. RBI's 25 and 26 for the AM left fielder. And perhaps Lodinger may have gotten to the end of his rope. Ball that should have been the sinker earlier. It's just kind of stayed up middle in. Good effort by Dones trying to keep it to the infield, but that's three hard hit balls for base hits this inning. Clean up hitter Mikey Honer well, hits his last two trips. Maybe a little high on that first pitch. Two and oh. Here comes the West Virginia head coach slash pitching coach Randy Mazey to the mound. For more coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals and interactive brackets, you can find it online at NCAA.com. Well, now uh, what was an eight-run lead down to six for West Virginia. This is an elimination game. The loser's season ends. The winner plays Duke in the regional final tonight, needing to beat Duke today and tomorrow to win the regional. Virginia has gave Kurtz Hall's loose it and up. They stay with Ottinger, who is in a strike to Honer to take it to two and one. To walk, and I'd have to believe here, Ottinger is not finished here, isn't he? He's pitched well, but he's given up a couple runs in this inning, and two more runners on. They do have Dukov scheduled. Yeah, I Hunter think Watson uh, coming up. I think you're uh, you're absolutely right. Looks like he's about done, or maybe not. Perhaps Randy Mazey. Just waiting for the announcement of the pinch hitter, but it looks like he's going to let him face him. So Hunter Watson pinch hits. With two runners on. Only one out. Adding in this DH spot that was originally occupied by Frizzell, then Dukoff. Fifty-six pitches in this relief appearance 
for Zach Ottinger. Inside corner strike. Pinch hitting freshman Hunter Watson. Put it right in on the hands. One and two. Now good hard fastball had a little cut on it. Hunter Watson really no chance. That's where you want to attack that left hander in right in on the belt. Down low is the danger zone. Just got a piece. This pinch hitter Hunter Watson. Great power, great athlete who was a dual threat quarterback. He played in high school. On the baseball side. I want to see that power develop that he has inside. Trying to add on to what has been a two run inning so far for the Aggies. Ground ball to first down on that. Inman goes to second. Safe there on the low throw. Well, Inman decided with a big lead. Didn't take the shore out at first and said got a little greedy wanted to go for that perhaps double play at a tough angle when you got that runner Honer heading into second. Well that's just uh, a little greedy on Inman's part. You got to realize one of the toughest double plays to make is the three six three or the three six one double play. You're absolutely right. I Almost like him going over and touching first, yep, I, get that second out. I agree when you're up six. But now the bases are loaded. And again, Texas A&M is one swing away from maybe getting back in this. And that's a drive to right near the line. And gone! A grand slam, and it's a new game. It's nine to seven. Texas A&M is still alive and there's still a lot of baseball to play here in Morgantown. Now just like that. Pitch up out over the plate Logan Foster showing good opposite field power. The second granny of the season. Now the West Virginia crowd thinking, whoa, we thought this game was over, and now it's not. Ottinger staying in there. And a foul off the foot of Hunter Coleman. Foul ball. What just happened here? Things got really, really interesting. Much more interesting for Aggie fans. For Mountain Air fans, they didn't want this kind of interest. They did not. It's been a six run inning. Still only one out. And I must say I'm surprised to still see Ottinger on the mound. You know, for your West Virginia, you're wanting to save some arms for the game against Duke, which, and you got to win twice, but you got to win this first. And they've let AM back into the game. Well, that's one of the strategies. That's why we saw Zach or Manoa last night, Alec Manoa last night, holding him back from the first. And he ended up playing or pitching the second game. Tough ground ball fair down the line and left and into the corner. Coleman chugging for second. And the tying run's going to come to the plate for Texas A&M. A grand slam for Foster. 
in this inning has changed the game. Location to location. The ball's down. He gets a ground ball. The ball's up, out over the plate. Hit it to the perfect part of the ballpark. Right down the 325 line in right field. Deloach do up, but they're going to pinch hit for him with Ty Condal. The ninth man to bat in this inning for AM. Gonzalez goes out to the mound. Sam Kessler has been getting loose in the bullpen for West Virginia. Well, Mountaineer defense or pitching coach taking a page out of Coach Rob Childress's book. He did the same thing. I'm expecting the call of the bullpen, trying to get him a couple more pitches. And now here comes. Randy Mazie. He'd been rolling along, but you could tell in this seventh inning, there was the leadoff base hit by Ty Coleman. Shoemaker base hit. They got Blom on a fly ball to center, but after the Blake hit, it really kind of seemed to me in the Honer walk that it was the end of the line. Brodiger would pitch really well since coming into the game after the nearly two hour rain delay. So Sam Kessler coming out of the bullpen making the jog to the mound with the West Virginia pitching change. We step aside. It's an elimination game between West Virginia and AM. The winner plays Duke in the regional final later tonight, needing to beat Duke twice to win the regional. But it looked like perhaps it was a done deal that it was going to be West Virginia getting Duke again. But AM is right back in it thanks to a Logan Foster Grand Slam, part of this six run bottom of the seventh that's still going on, Spanky. And the West Virginia fans trying to figure out what hit them. They bring in Sam Kessler. Well, Sam Kessler, their closer, and I could see maybe not getting them in as early, but right now I don't think you have a choice. You can't save anybody. You've got the tying run at home plate. Sam Kessler throws in the 90s, really relies on movement. Got a real good sinker, so he's a sinker slider guy. And like most closers, Usually two pitches, and it relies on getting that ground ball. Texas A&M had three total hits through the first six innings of the game. They have five hits so far here in the seventh. And Coach Rob Childress' his team looked dead in the water, quite frankly, when this bottom of the seventh began, down nine to one. And now they're very much in this game with a tying run at the plate. Pinch hitter Ty Condal hitting for Zach Deloach.
Heigl trying to be aggressive, but chased the pitch, the slider well down it away. Yeah, as a pinch hitter, you kind of want to get up there looking for something good to hit on the first pitch, and Condal just a little too aggressive. So he decides, Kessler does. I'll give you a look at the same type of pitch, and he goes after it again. Well, here the school of thought is, you know, waste one and set something up. I, I keep throwing the same pitch. No harder. As a pitcher, a lot of times you get too anxious and you end up hanging it. Right back to the slider, and on three pitches, dispatches Condo for the second out. Well, the last pitch was probably the best one to hit, but still devastating the first two way outside. That one a little bit over the plate, but outstanding location from Kessler. So Hunter Coleman at second, two outs now. The brother Ty Coleman, who led off the inning. It seems like a long time ago now, but remember how the inning began, that hard ground ball that skipped past the third baseman Brophy was a hit, scored a hit. That's how it all began. So Coleman's batting for a second time in this inning. All right now, the slider. Is the money pitch for Sam Kessler? Definitely a go to. And AM has scouting reports. And they're basically two pitches, but those two pitches are that sinker going in on the righties and that slider probably notched up a bit with the excitement today. Coleman not going to chase that slider off the turf. Brophy takes his time, throws across, gets the out. But the damage done. Ten batters come to the plate. AM's back in it after a six run seventh. NCAA Baseball Regionals are presented by Capital One. Well, this game looked like it was ready to be put away. 
by West Virginia after they led 9-1 going to the bottom of the seventh. But Texas A&M gets six. Four of them on a grand slam from Logan Foster. And this game is a game again. Top of the eighth. West Virginia, the visiting team on their home field. And they'll have the three, four, and five hitters coming up against Casey Collick. Inman, the first baseman, is one for four with a single. As we look at our in-game box score, 13 West Virginia hits. That's up the first base line. Foul. That ball had some funky spin off the bat and almost spun back fair. It's one of those balls that end up right off the very end of the bat with a wooden bat and especially a little cup on the end of it. It really goes crazy with spin. Nothing at two. Second hit of the game for Marcus Inman. The old, you hang it, I'll bang it. After a couple of really good breaking balls, Casey Callick just hung that one up and probably fortunate that Inman didn't deposit it over the fence. Tristan Hudson is going to run for Inman. So that ends Inman's day, not night perhaps, if West Virginia does move on or play Duke. Even as effective as Kessler was with that slider to put out the remainder of the fire in the bottom of the inning spanking. If I'm West Virginia, I almost get the feeling like I can't lay low here. You got to score an add on, don't you? They got to have some kind of answer try to get that Momo back in your favor. McIntosh has a homer today. It came in the fifth, a two run shot along with a walk. It's one for three. If A&M on the other side is able to put up a zero here, then Big Mo is still sitting comfortably in the third base dugout with the Aggies. Out to center field, Ty Condo has stayed in the game in center. The luff of a tag by Hudson, but he's not going anywhere, and that's the first out. Little pet peeve of mine when I'm at the plate. That guy at second base doesn't think about, or he has no notions to steal at third base. I want him quiet. I don't want him bouncing around out there. It's something that gets really distracting. You know, if that runner's dancing around, then you have the second baseman moving around and you get a guy on the mound with good stuff. It makes things a little bit tougher to concentrate on. Ball one to Ivan Gonzalez, who's had four great plate appearances, three hits, two doubles, two runs scored. He's had an impressive day. Well, with first base open, you think that possibly the old walk that well unintentional walk. And, and here but comes Rob Childress, and I think you're you're on to something here because even though you got Brophy and McIntosh and others with home runs, Gonzalez 
is very locked in. After Sunday Night Baseball, don't miss Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. He'll have post-game reactions from Game 2 Warriors Raptors, plus inside the Sox Yankees series. And how Tim Hardaway, Mitch Richmond, and Chris Mullen changed the NBA 30 years ago. Sports Center after Sox Yankees on ESPN and the app. Well, besides AM being happy that they're back in the game, the other team that may be most happy to see what's taking place here is Duke. They've been waiting. They've already used the batting cages. And their head coach, Chris Pollard, has his team ready. Long conversation there on the mound. And it took the plate umpire to break it up. A 2 0 count on Ivan Gonzalez. Slowly left side, a tag, did not get the tag on the runner, Hudson, but does get Gonzalez at first, and Hudson almost ran himself into an inning-ending double play. Well, I'm not sure if he's looking to have this reviewed, whether it was a tag. I don't believe the tag was there. Looked like possibly out of the baseline. Childress talking with third base umpire Rob Hansen. Good look from our third base camera. You know, he was he was close to getting out of the baseline. Well, as a runner, you create your baseline, and then from there, once you get going, you get about three feet, and that we had a tape measure. And I'm thinking that's exactly what they're discussing right now. So all four umpires confer now. That was a really good look from our crew, by the way. Did you think that exceeded the three feet? Would you make a call here and call him out? Or? Yeah, he's out. Yep. Yeah, I mean, um, and that's a, uh, a call that our third base umpire, Rob Hansen, you know, had it right in front of him, but I think second base umpire Gary Swanson could actually make this call and overturn that there wasn't a tag. And I didn't believe there was a tag. I think this is all about him out of the baseline. And I don't think this is reviewable. They're going to say, they're going to call him safe and say that he didn't get out of the baseline, at least enough to be called out. And now Rob Childress wants a further explanation. There's quite a bit of reviewable play types, but nothing on there that would qualify the runner out of the baseline. And that does say force and tag plays at any base, but you know, semantically, you could go a lot of different directions with what that says, but I don't think that applies to what we saw there. Otherwise, we would see a review. So perhaps a break there for West Virginia as it does allow their top of the eighth to continue and they have a runner at third in Hudson with two outs. Brophy, two run a home run in the second that opened the scoring. He's also singled and walked, scored a couple of times. I'm with you, though. I thought AM's argument was a good one. It sure. Out. You saw that one foot step onto the grass, which doesn't automatically make him out because, as you said, he creates his own running lane once he starts running towards the back, correct? Correct. And then from there, they like said it's a three feet. Might have been a generous three feet in right. either direction. And when you say three feet, in, in either direction, right or left. Right. It was a risky move by Hudson. Kalik trying to make it a moot point with an 0-2 pitch. And it's off the glove of the pitcher, Kalik, and in the center, and West Virginia does get a run. So the call, non-call, whatever one you want to call it, on Hudson. 
Dixon being in or out of the baseline. West Virginia takes advantage, and they get an RBI from Brophy, his third of the day. Now Brophy just clobbers this ball, a line bullet right back at Kalick, and they're just not quite quick enough. If he's a goaltender, you call it, beat him on the glove side. Have to be very, very quick. And that comebacker. We'll see how big that tenth run of the game is for West Virginia. After a six-run bottom of the seventh for Texas A&M, a big rip and miss by T.J. Lake. He drove in two in the last inning, and at that point, it was nine to one. And you thought, all right. Game probably over. Not the case. Strike over the inside edge. Oh, 15 hits now for West Virginia. I'm sure they would have liked to split some of those up, save some of those runs from last for for last night. But they may need every single one of them for today's ball game. Ten runs, 15 hits, and four errors for West Virginia. Seven runs, eight hits, three errors for Texas A&M. Right side, knocked down by Hunter Coleman, but he has time to pick it up and take it to the bag. A little controversy in that inning with the runner's lane, but West Virginia does get a run, and they lead 10-7 at the midpoint of the eighth. This elimination game between West Virginia and Texas A&M has taken a turn. Still a game as we go to the bottom of the eighth. The winner faces Duke in the regional final tonight. The loser's season ends. And Duke's been hanging around for a while. They've long finished up their time in the batting cage for what was supposed to be a 6 o'clock Eastern start time, which obviously is not going to happen at that point. Top of the order is up for Texas A&M in the bottom of the eighth. So the way these NCAA tournament games are where the home team that hosts can actually be the visiting team like West Virginia is, Texas A&M knows that ball is just foul near the first base bag. They will be the team that has a chance if it gets to the bottom of the ninth where it is now. Couple of hits today for Shoemake. Two and one. 
again ball outside Pudge Gonzalez looking to make that a little prettier than what it was. Three balls and a strike. And there is a leadoff walk to Shoemake. At third base is Andrew Zaitel. Kevin Brophy, who was at third, has gone across the diamond to first. Zaitel is in the three spot vacated by Marcus Inman, who was lifted for Hudson, the pinch runner. Bryce Blom is up. 0 for 3 with a walk today with a couple of stolen bases in the first inning. West Virginia reliever Sam Kessler came on in the seventh. Faced a couple hitters, retired both on that slider. Brings it to Blom and gets the call on the low outside corner. Normally I'd say Braden Shoemake at first base would have a chance to steal second base, but this is where Ivan Gonzalez has come into play. He's a running game stopper back there. Little flare out into left center field that drops. It bangs off Davis, but he's able to corral it after he gets up. And Shoemake down to second. Base hit for Blom. And the tying run's going to come to the plate with nobody out. Ball hit into what we call no man's land. Great effort by Austin Davis. To catch the ball, but more importantly, kind of kept it in front of him. That ball gets by him, even though TJ Lake was backing him up. That could have been second and third. Matters the left fielder for the Aggies, Cam Blake. On a two run single an inning ago. Strike one. In seven, West Virginia. Bottom of the eighth. Lake behind it, fouls it off the third base side. Sam Kessler, since he's come in, whenever he's been ahead in the count, he's just wiped people out. His troubles come whenever he's been behind in the count. Up and away. At 91 miles per hour. So he's been showing that fastball. It has a little two seam run to it away from the lefty. Out near fans sweating this out. As I'm sure our Aggie fans. Smothered by Gonzalez. And that slider. He's gotten a bunch of swings and misses on that pitch. Great plate discipline by Cam Blake. Two on nobody out. The count two two on Blake. Junior Cam Blake 
One home run on the year, which came against South Carolina like on April 20th. He does represent the tying run for the Aggies. Was a hanging slider, wasn't yeah, it? Alarm bells go off when you see that big swing and that fall off is straight back. That's the one that hitter is right on. He get away with that one. Ball hit down the third base side. Left fielder comes in and makes the call. TJ Lake called off Zytel and Tucker. Well, there's the first out of the inning. Wow. And it brings up their cleanup batter, Honer. That was great communication. Between Zytel, Tucker, and TJ Lake. The outfielder coming in, it's a much easier play. As long as he gets vocal, then that shortstop third base will peel out of the way. Much, much easier play. Owner's been a tough out. Last three times up, he's reached with a couple of singles and a walk. Strike one. Couldn't lay off that slam. Only time he's been retired today in the first when he was a strikeout victim of the West Virginia starting pitcher Ryan Berger, who did not come back after our nearly two hour rain delay. Another good slider by Kessler. Once again, Head in the count, 0 2. And after those two good breaking balls, same thing. Just don't try to overthrow it and hang it. Pass for an appeal and no swing down to first base umpire David Yule. He can take a peek. Does he go? Yeah. <laughs> Another one right. So close. Could have gone either way. Probably the proper call, though. Don't tell that to Mountaineer fans. No. Owner lives for another pitch. And Kessler 1 2 offering. Slider hit foul down the right field side will go out of play. <laughs> fans are sweating it out. Mountaineer fans had to be thinking when it was up 9-1. They were up 9-1 going to the bottom of the seventh. This game was over. A&M says, no, nah, not the case. Oh, getting away with that one. You Off see the play just enough. Yeah, when no. you see that breaking ball stay right around the belt to the upper thigh, that's a ball that can be launched and Honer get plenty of power. 28th overall pitch and 21st pitch of the inning coming from Sam Kessler. Slider strikes him out. Got the good break down and away. And the strikeout is the second out of the inning. Now finally got the ball down and away. Previous breaking ball that he missed up near the belt. Great location. I'm always a big believer in location over selection. And that was good location for Kessler. Hunter Watson. 
Pinch hit in the seventh that reached on an error by the then first baseman Edman. He stayed in as the DH falls behind on one. in the stands today, as there usually is. And m had two on, nobody out. It's two on, two outs. And foul. Takes it to one and two. That's going to get the Mountaineer fans, many of them on their feet. at 90 up in his eyes and he wouldn't go after it. A big shift put on right at the end of this at bat. Looking for Watson to pull. He does pull it but foul. That's a sneaky suspicion to me that that breaking ball's coming. You know, trying not to overthink things with two strikes on you. You're out there looking for the baseball and anything close, trying to put it in play. But well, there's a big hole on the left side if he can take something the other way. But can you do that if he sees another slider? Well, Tevin Tucker, the shortstop, is almost playing a regular second base. Dones the regular second baseman playing a short right field. Another 2 2 pitch. Got that slider to break down and into the lefty. Kessler got in a bit of a jam with two on nobody out. He gets himself out of it with a five ball and a couple of strikeouts. Well, Kessler full of energy. That's such a big pitch. Mountaineers stay on top. Got uh, nine homers and sure would like to see ten right here. Look at my hat! Look at my hat! I always call it! I always call it! Game gets to the night, 10-7 West Virginia. Let's take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. He's got uh, nine homers and sure would like to see 10 right here. Randy Mays 
Casey, the head coach of West Virginia, was visiting with us from the dugout during the fifth inning, and McIntosh came up and said he'd like to see him hit his tenth home run. He did a two-run shot, and then Alec Manoa, the ace pitcher, came over and said that he called it. And that's our Capital One rewarding performance. Will it be enough for West Virginia, who led by nine at one point, but are only up three in the first down of the ninth? Comes on a fly ball to right to Logan Foster and Tevin Tucker is retired. Well, baseball players known superstitious. Alec Manoa had some going on with the hat. Coach Maisie thinking that whenever he puts on the headset that they're going to score runs. I'd just get him a headset. You know, whether he <laughs> talks to us or not, just put it on. And just babble away. <laughs> Alec Manoa, who pitched last night, Duke beat him 4 0, and West Virginia's trying to set up a rematch with Duke. Coming up a little later this evening, a strike to Austin Davis. He's walked a couple of times and scored a run. Nothing at two. Uh, Kalik. Really possesses a devastating slider. He hung one last inning, or actually hung a couple of them. They cost him a run, and I think that was a big run. It, even though it just said uh, they were up by three, and when you look back, they were up by a bunch. Still, that just squeezes some of that momentum back in their favor. And Davis picks up a base hit. He's motoring for two. And is going to make it standing up. Rolled it right up the first baseline and into the corner. Now all the starters have a base hit for West Virginia today. Yeah, this is some super hitting. Got a fastball away and just went with it down that right field line with Davis's wheels easy getting into second. Actually, a nice job by Foster keeping him right there. But I don't think they're done. There's a chance that Davis wants to take third. By the way, the first extra base hit of the season for Austin Davis, and he's up near 60 at bats on the year. On the top of the order comes back up for the Mountaineers and Tyler Dones. Back to your point, I'm with you. The run that West Virginia scored in the eighth and the somewhat controversy around it with the runner being possibly out of the baseline just seems like a really big run right now. Kind of shell shocked for the team, the fans, everybody, the whole town of Morgantown, you know, kind of cruising. And then all of a sudden, AM puts up a six spot in that seventh inning. And to come back with the one. In the grand scheme of thing, it will it make a difference? Psychologically, absolutely. No question. Texas A&M is going to trail it by at least three going to the bottom of the ninth. They're the home team. They're playing on the Mountaineers' home field. With their season on the line. Both teams' seasons on the line. Crowd didn't like it. Plato Pirates says it's at the knees. One and two. Yeah, the one, one thing I've always noticed, no matter how much you complain, that umpire's not going to change his mind. And if anything, and I don't want him mad at me. Kalik throws to second, but back in. Davis almost got a little too far off there. Well, he was on his way to third base. Little inside spin move by Kalik kept him there and a little closer than probably wanted was Hunter Davis heading back to second.
Takes off for third and a bouncy ball to short. Shoemake throws, gets the out at first. And I was carefully watching Davis round third. Almost had to feel like he wanted to try to score on them. And the ESPN Network's bringing you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with the regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip around coverage available on ESPN3 and the Bases Loaded channel, and all the coverage is available on the ESPN app. Niels, we were looking at the same exact thing, and I'd have to think that if Davis would have gone ahead and kept going, I think he scores. They don't want to mess with Hill. So they put him on. An intentional pass, and it's going to bring up Zaitel batting for the first time today. So Mikey Honer going out giving signs. Typically, you have three signs, one that you're going to go to second, one that you're going to go to third, and another one they're just going to let him take the base, and you're going to put it in your pocket. Runner from first hill goes. No throw by Honer, who's concerned about the lead runner at third, Davis, trying to score. And that's the way you have to play it. You're going to go ahead and walk him. Doesn't it means that you're not really concerned about it? You want to get that hitter. Oh, and two on Zytel. It's his second plate appearance of the regional. He came in as a defensive replacement at third base in game one without a plate appearance. Was 0 for 1 last night against Duke. Senior from New Jersey. Oh, tough pitch to hit or take right there. Actually, as a hitter, if you're looking out that way, you can serve that into right field. Big strikeout for AM as West Virginia strands two. Last chance for AM in this elimination game. The bottom of the ninth coming up. game looked like it was over when it was 9-1 West Virginia going to the bottom of the seventh but Logan Foster with a grand slam down the line in right and a and put up a six spot in the bottom of the seventh to make it a game again they cut it to 9-7 West Virginia with a run in the eighth and it's 10-7 West Virginia going to the bottom of the ninth last chance for A&M this is an elimination game the winner plays Duke in the regional final coming up later tonight the loser season ends. Had about a two hour rain delay, as you see in the bottom of the fourth weather delay. Here is Foster leading off. Foster, Hunter Coleman, 
And then the center fielder Condal do up. Six, seven, and eight part of the order. Kessler trying to close this out. He came in to get the final out of the seventh. Actually, final two outs of the seventh. Got in a jam in the eighth when the first two batters reached, but then got out of it. One and two. And Sam Kessler really showing good feel for that slider. Almost like he's more confident in the slider throwing for a strike than the heater. Slider had a lot of downward movement. A little bit out of the zone though, two and two. There's another one and he sends it to deep left center field. TJ Lake on the run, still going and it's up against the fence. Picked up by Austin Davis. He thought about three, but wisely does not want to make it out at third base. It goes back to second, and Foster has a double, and here comes AM in the bottom of the ninth. Now Logan Foster finding the power stroke. This time hitting it very deep into left center field. And that slider just didn't clear, didn't get down enough. TJ Lake giving it a good effort, but not quite enough to get there. Even looked like he got that somewhat off the end of the bat. Still almost hit it out to left center field. Here's Hunter Coleman had a two homer game yesterday. He came against Fordham. So when we first got here, I'm talking about the elevation because I thought the balls that were hit into the outfield had some carry to it. And I really do. I think the ball carries really well here at this ballpark. One and one to Hunter Coleman. Doubled in his last at bat. Walked prior to that and is one for three. And that run West Virginia scored in the eighth. Looking even bigger right now. Otherwise you got the tying run at the plate. He's so slider dependent on this right now. I don't want to say you're sitting slider. You don't want to get behind a fastball, but you definitely got to be looking for this thing, huh? Well, depending on your count, you know, that's his bread and butter right now, and there's nothing wrong with that. When you're ahead in the count, if you look breaking ball and you get it, go ahead and smash it. Believe, there two and two. believe the days of you know, looking for a fastball and fastball counts. Well, those days are over. You get so many kids at all different levels throwing their secondaries and pitching backwards. That slider smothered by Gonzalez. Got a left-handed bat, Aaron Walters waiting on deck to pinch hit. He would be batting for Condal. Season on the line in the elimination game between West Virginia and Texas A&M. Nobody out. Kessler to bring a big 3-2 pitch to Hunter Coleman. It's out to right, initially going back hill, now comes in and has it for an easy first out. And sophomore Aaron Walters comes off the bench to bat for Ty Condal.
You know, Hunter Coleman guessed right. The only problem is the breaking ball didn't break quite as much. It was almost a backup slider. Kind of jammed him. with a fastball outside. Yeah. Another strike to Walters. Yeah. AM needs a, another base runner to have a chance. Down three. Near the bottom of the ninth. Takes it low, two and one. Walter's a guy who's on the depth chart as a catcher, can also place play some outfield and First base, but right now called on to. And the bat off with just one out of here in the ninth inning. Going to keep the line moving for the Aggies, but now it's a 2 2 count. That might have been his pitch to hit right there. Yeah, and again, you're trained so much to look for a fastball two and one. Guy comes in, throws a good late breaking slider. Maybe not in the best location, but you get away with it when you pitch backwards. Slider and he laid off down and in. Another deep count, three and two on the pinch hitter, Aaron Walters. 50 pitches from Sam Kessler which is significant if indeed West Virginia is able to hang on and play Duke in the regional final. But that is not a foregone conclusion like it looked like it may be a few innings ago. Ball four and the tying run is going to come to the plate for AM. Just a little bit high. Well, backdoor breaking ball. Gonzalez made it look pretty. But our home plate umpire, Sal Giacomantonio, ruled that that pitch was outside. It went around the plates. You're going to run it first for Walters, Delante Wingate. Got Coleman up, and then the top of the order was Shoemake waiting on deck. So barring a game-ending double play here, they're going to get Shoemake to the plate. This pitch is a strike from Kessler. Coleman singled in the seventh, part of that six-run inning. Shoemake well, has a couple of hits today and, and swinging the bat well in this regional on deck. Kessler gets ahead 0 2. He painted a fastball in a low outside corner. Well, I thought he had one more fastball in him. I'm not I wasn't sure, but you know, whenever you're looking breaking ball, breaking ball, and then all of a sudden you see that heater, it looks like it's about 102. That one on the gun at 89. Gets Ty Coleman on the slider. AM down to their final out, but they're going to get Shoemate to the plate. Four strikeout for Kessler. We mentioned at the top of our telecast how seven national seeds were facing elimination today, including the number 15 national seed, West Virginia. So far, five have already posted wins. 
with Stanford leading and West Virginia, but the tying run at the plate again for AM. And a left handed bat, Braden Shoemaker. West Virginia head coach Randy Mazie's walking towards home plate. He started to go out to talk to his team. Now goes back to the plate umpire. Possibly thinking that so many trips to the mound, I hesitate to think. Yeah. What else it could be? Well, he doesn't go to the mound. He want to make sure you don't want to. If you're amazing, force a, a change at the, on the mound. Are they, are they trying to confirm here, Spanky, the, on how many trips he's taken here? He does, obviously doesn't want to lose Kessler. And that's the one thing you, you have to make doubly sure because yeah, once you cross the line to go out there and you're forced to take him out. In the grand scheme of things, you're not sure how many times you've gone out there. Yeah, there's been a lot going on over the last, uh, what are we looking at here? Uh, six hours since we've had first pitch. That includes a two hour rain delay. In actual game time, about four hours and 15 minutes or so. so Coach Macy has had his say with his team, at least the infielders and pitcher Sam Kessler. It was 9-1 West Virginia going to the bottom of the seventh. And here's Shoemake. We got the Major League Baseball draft starting tomorrow. Shoemake's a guy that a lot of scouts love to go in the first round. And if you're AM, you get the best player. You get the game on the line. That's what you want to have. All one low. AM, the first two games of this regional, was six for 17 with runners in scoring position. That's about a 350 average. Today, they're two for 18 with runners in scoring position. That's 111. And they can make all that perhaps disappear with a long one from Shoemake, who's now ahead in the count. Two balls, no strikes. Double edged sword. Oh, baby. If you're the Mountaineers. You get a guy that's got some pop. Also a guy that can absolutely fly. So you don't necessarily want to walk him and put the go ahead or the winning run at home plate. The tying run and the guy that can burn at first. Strike on 2-0. Oh. And threw him an 88 mile per hour fastball. Yeah, keep that in mind. This is the bottom of the night. AM's the home team on West Virginia's home field. So if Shoemake's able to reach and extend the game, that would bring the potential winning run to the plate for AM. Did he go on that slider? He did not. He held up. And Bryce Blum on deck who leads Texas A&M in home runs with eight. Blum would be next. Two on, two outs. Tying run at the plate for A&M. They're down to their last down. And there's ball four in the potential winning run is coming to the plate with two outs at the bottom of the ninth for Texas A&M. As we started the bottom of the seventh, would you have any idea, Niels, that we'd be here right now? Who in their right mind would say, yes, it just <laughs> didn't seem logical, but me and him with that Logan Foster Grand Slam, a six run inning. Now you got the winning run at the plate and a sliding stop by Gonzalez. The winner plays Duke. The loser season is over. And the game's at the plate. That's 
So he gets a slider over for a strike, one and one. You can imagine right now Randy Mazie. I have to think his uh, palms are a little sweaty. I know mine are. I don't know if there are any dry palms in this facility right now. And that's down and away, two and one. And with another slider. Blom has put the ball in the air three times, flight out to center twice, to left once. He had a base hit to center his last time up. He also walked. Fouls a slider. And a and down to their final strike. How about the drama here in Morgantown? Which Sam Kessler is going to either save this ball game or lose it with that slider. Fully determined that's going to be his pitch. He tried to overthrow that slider it looked like. Left it way up and now it's a full count. If you're West Virginia, technically you don't have to give in here. But you can force in a run with a walk. Here comes a 3-2 pitch. And a high drive. Deep to left. Back goes Lake at the fence. And Texas A&M miraculously has come. for the Mountaineers up a bunch early till the seventh inning A&M making some noise that, that, that I am so drained right now I felt like I played the entire nine innings oh my goodness that was that 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 story but this is unbelievable a four hour seven minute game that does not include an hour 56 minute weather delay and it ends on the last swing by Blom and AM wins it 11 to 10. Well, my point to you, Spanky, right before the pitch was a walk isn't the worst thing in the world for West Virginia. This was the worst thing in the world. The second grand slam of the game for AM. Well, he absolutely knew it. And it was the slider. Three and two. He hung it. Blom hit a big home run yesterday to get them going, and he finishes it off today with the big giant Grand Salami. His team leading ninth home run of the season. And the handshakes between the teams, but the West Virginia team completely staggered as Kessler allows a grand slam with two outs and a full count in the bottom of the ninth. It does not get any more dramatic than what we have just witnessed here in Morgantown. Unreal. It's Texas A&M, the two seed, against the three seed Duke in the regional final. And A&M's got to beat Duke tonight and tomorrow to win the regional. But the host team in number 15 national seed, West Virginia, is eliminated in fashion that I'm still trying to comprehend here, Spanky. Well, you and every Mountaineer fan, some of the folks, they they, they just don't, uh, it, they're stunned. They're still in their seats. They can't believe what they just saw. I can't believe what I just saw. It just, uh, that, if, if, if you're an Aggie fan, you, you just have to be ballistic right now. That, that just is one of the best things that, that ever could happen to a team. And we'll see if that translates to super momentum going into the uh, nightcap tonight. So Texas A&M scores 10 of the game's last 11 runs. Grand slam by 
Foster in the seventh and a grand slam by Blom wins it with two outs and a full count. Wow. Unreal finish in Morgantown. And Rob Childress's Texas A&M Aggies got off the bat and somehow survived to get to the regional final against Duke. Yeah, it's a day that Bryce Blom and every one of his teammates, they are going to remember this blast way over the 375 sign and the game winner, Waka Salami. Worth another look. One of the most historic swings for Texas A&M. Bryce Blom. Wow. A slider that hung up there. Caught a little too much of the plate. And an unbelieving Sam Kessler and the rest of his teammates as that went out over the 375 side. Texas A&M wins it over West Virginia 11-10. Texas A&M plays Duke next. For Mike Spanky, LaValle, and our entire crew, I'm Mark Neely. Thanks for sharing this one with us. So long from Morgantown. Team, we uh, hey, we're not, we're not recording the interview yet. Okay, but but, uh, but I know you're ex completely <laughs> pumped up right here. Uh, so I'll let you save the good stuff. But wow, wow, wow is right. Just wow. All right, we're gonna record this. Bryce Blom's walk-off grand slam in the bottom of the ninth eliminates the number 15 national seed, West Virginia, 11-10. Bryce, you guys were down nine.